right, you guys, welcome back to the channel. We got a special, 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 special guest, man. We got a legend here. We're doing something a little different. Um, it, it, this this podcast was called the In, in the Pocket Podcast, but uh, I think that was already taken. <laughs> so, <laughs> it, it, so many podcasts out today, bro. It's just... yeah, it is. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I mean, yeah, I... I for now, it's gonna be the in and out of podcast because you don't know. In and, like, yeah, in and out of pocket podcast. Yes, yeah, so uh, in and out like of that. pocket podcast. Yeah, like because it's a few people in the pocket. It's a lot of drummers out of pocket. <laughs> so, yes, yes. So, man, we got we got a legend here, the legend, one of my goats, like for real. Uh, we got the legendary Calvin Rogers. Oh my god. Just I don't I don't know man this is this is very <laughs> surreal like to just like I've been watching you since before I knew how to even record to upload on YouTube like this is oh man <laughs> this, this is this is this is crazy um but uh yeah let's let's uh let's start with pretty much um let's see yeah let, let's start with the basic the basic question. Uh, why did why drums? What made you choose drums? Man, you know, I have um, I answer this question the same way every time. People always okay. like go oh, like, "Why did you choose drums?" And I always say, "Drums chose me," because okay. yeah. um, I just feel like I was um, I was looking at my grandson the other day. I have a grandson that's four years old. And I was looking at him the other day and I was going, I think by now when I was his age, I have memories of like playing at the drums, like, you know, trying to play the drums. I have memories of having like a toy drum kit. Um, I have memories of, you know, being fascinated with drums, beating on my mom's cookware and stuff like that. So, mm -hmm. um, it seems like I don't, I can't remember a time where I was not like fascinated with drums. I just can't remember a moment. So, um, you know, it's, it's been a part of my life as long as I can recall being alive. Every memory I have, um, drums were there. So, man, yeah. I, I wish I had that story. Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> like, cause, uh, uh, well, okay, let me put this out there, too, because I, I, I'm i pretty sure you know by now that I'm a triplet. It took me a while, but yeah, I'm, it's, I'm aware it's, now. It's, <laughs> <laughs> it, like, we, like, we're literally building content right now off of convincing the world we are triplets. They yeah. think it's AI. They think we're yeah. editing. I'm, but, um, yeah. But what was funny is drums was not my first instrument. I actually... I wanted to play guitar. My so doesn't one of your brothers play guitar? Yep. The the young one plays guitar. Another one plays. He plays keyboard? keys. Keys. Yep. Okay. Yep. Okay. So the guitar player, but he was playing drums first. Now uh. he always he always brings this up. He only the only reason why he was playing drums is because I couldn't play fast songs. In my grandfather's church like i could not i only played the slow songs i could not yeah. i couldn't play shout nothing no so did you used to like you used to drag well no or you just couldn't keep up so i didn't even get to that that point because my grandfather he had crazy praise break signals crazy <laughs> Like, and he was like, if you missed it, like you, it got on his nerve. Cause like he like, he was, he was, he was in the seventies oh, yeah. and like that he's switching drummers <laughs> just like that. Like I remember this one time I was in the back of the church. It was Sunday school. My grandfather said, and this is on tape. He was like, y'all got all this Facebook stuff going on, but I've been on Facebook my whole life jumped. Pointed at the drums. I had to run from the back of the church. <laughs> but yeah, he said I've been on Facebook my whole life. That, that was a shouting moment. <laughs> yep, that, that's it. They, my grandfather's what church. Mean? I have no idea. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
Oh man, I don't know why that's cracking me up. That's funny. Yeah, that my oh. praise breaks was a random praise breaks. Okay, I'm gonna tell you one more. This one, I might have to cut this for from YouTube, but it, it, I'll, I'll be here. We go. So <laughs> this we have the audio recording of this. It was a convention. Grandfather's preaching. He's praising first lady. She she's still mad at him to this day for this. But he was no. pretty much talking about he was like my my uh first lady, you know, she 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 always makes sure my rice is seasoned for breakfast. I don't know why he was eating rice for breakfast and what seasoning they were putting in it. I have I don't know. But he was like <laughs> he said he said pretty much like she she always knew how to she she knew when I uh, was needing something and knew how to take care of me. Then he said, and I quote, he, she also took care of me in the bed. Then he said, there's a whole lot of shaking going on. That's when he pointed at me. And oh, my I, God. They had a revival shout over that comment. Over a whole lot of shaking going on. <laughs> yeah. So Dang. That's, but uh, I say all that say that old uh, school. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I I was always getting kicked off the drums just because of that when it came to playing shout music. <laughs> but um, but it was a, then like I, I was able like I started watching gospel chops, and uh, I started like really getting like a passion to like kick my brother off the drums. Like your time's <laughs> over. Like that's it. You were supposed to play guitar in the first place, and then that, that's 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 what happened with that. Okay. Um, man. So uh, yeah, you pretty much talked about the beginning, so I can skip that question. <laughs> 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 but um, uh, so yeah, what was your most craziest gig? Like the the number one gig that you will never forget. Oh man, um, this is a crazy story. Okay. Uh. Um, I well, first of all, I told I told one very funny story about um, about a crazy gig I had on a a, a podcast I did with Sheree Reed. Um, I don't know if you've seen that, but you if you haven't, it's 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 hilarious. Um, so me and Sheree Reed sat down and talked about a bunch of stuff, and we he he asked me about some crazy gigs because we spent a lot of time together playing um, different gigs at one point and he knew some of my funny stories. So, um, there's one very funny one and probably the, the funniest one is probably the one I told on Sheree's gig, but so around 2000, maybe 2006 or seven, uh, I'm doing a cruise called festival at sea with Fred Hammond. Okay. And um, get on the boat. We got on the boat, and there was a um, there was a storm chasing the boat. So um, you know, we were supposed to. I don't know. You, you've been on cruises before, so you know when that kind of stuff happens, they start rerouting the destinations. Oh, so like you get on the so I you get on the cruise. Okay, so you get on the cruise and say you're supposed to cruise to like Cozumel. You know what I'm saying? Or something like that. Mm -hmm. um, you may get on the boat, and if there's a hurricanes or anything like that, they may say, hey, we're not going to go to Cozumel. We're going to go in another direction. We're going to go to, like, Jamaica, or we're going to do Puerto Rico, or we're going to skip Cozumel and go straight to the Caribbean, somewhere else, or anything like that. So um, we get on the boat, and immediately, um, it seems like maybe they should have just canceled this cruise, but... Immediately, we get on the boat and they're like, um, we're, th there's a storm chasing the boat. And so we're going to reroute the destinations. Um, and so we were on the cruise for four days and it was two nights of R&B, two nights of gospel. It's one act on gospel, one act on R&B. So Fred is the gospel act and the R&B act is cameo. Okay. So, um, Sugarfoot is playing with Cameo. Um, Moffitt, Jonathan Moffitt is playing with, with Cameo. And 
they rerouted the boat. They changed the port destination where Cameo was supposed to get on the boat at. Because I think we were on the boat for the entire cruise. Cameo only wanted to get on. They didn't get on wherever we got on that. So we got on in the state somewhere. And um, they were supposed to get on at one of the islands. Maybe they were coming from somewhere else. I'm not really sure. But in any case, they changed where Cameo was supposed to get on the boat at. And Sugarfoot and the guitar player didn't make the gig. Um, they, they don't, they don't get on the gig. They don't get on the boat. So, uh, so I, this is the first night on the boat. It's first, first night on the boat. We pulled off and, uh, they're saying, Hey, we rerouting the boat and two of Cameo's band members are not going to make it. So man, literally, um, I'm on the cruise. I'm young. So it's about two, three o'clock in the morning. I'm hanging out, run, running the boat up and down, you know, mm-hmm. hanging out. And so I get back to my room at about 2.30, 3 o'clock in the morning. My phone in my cabin is ringing. So I answer the phone and it's Fred Hammond's brother, Ray. He gets on the phone and he's like, uh, man, where in the world have you been? I've been calling your phone. And I'm like, man, I, I've been out. We on the cruise. You know what I'm saying? I'm. I'm hitting the boat up. I'm I'm eating free. I'm you know what I'm saying, looking at the ladies. I'm chilling, you know. <laughs> so he was like, "Well, Cameo's drummer didn't make the boat, yeah. and they need you to they they need you to play with them for two nights." So I'm like, um, "Man, okay, all right, Cameo." So I'm immediately starting to put together in my mind like what this music is like i'm just while i'm on the phone i'm starting to try to process what like how i gotta think and so he's like the the manager's about to call you i'm about to get off i'm I'm literally um about to call him now tell him to call you you're in the room cool so manager calls me and says hey uh jonathan didn't make the boat um and so we're gonna play the gig you know anyway and uh we need you to play 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 the gig play drums can you handle it and i'm like yeah sure so they're like all right well um meet us downstairs for sound check and uh we'll start going through the you know going through the music so i'm saying i said i I said uh you you want me to meet you downstairs for sound check when they're like yeah you can go downstairs now (laughs) so i'm like it's it's 3 (laughs) a.m so they're like yeah yeah go ahead go down there now so i go down to the I go down to the to the theater, and sure enough, uh, one of the guys is there. Keyboard players there, bro. Keyboard players there programming his keyboard. They weren't running any Pro Tools. They weren't running no backing tracks, no clicks, no nothing. Everything that they got that's digital is being triggered manually. So a keyboard is there. Load keyboard players there loading disc in this keyboard, like loading up samples loading up sounds, you know what I'm saying? Stuff like that. I'm like, Jesus, man, you gotta, you, you know, there's an easier way. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so, so then, so, so, so then, uh, so I, 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 their, their production manager or stage manager or something like that comes over there and he's like, yeah, you, you Calvin, you the drummer. I'm like, yeah. He's like, okay, cool, man. So he was like, um, uh, we're going to bring you Jonathan's kit. And they start to roll Jonathan's kit out on the deck. And it's classic Jonathan Moffat kit. It's mm-hmm. cymbals yeah. everywhere. <laughs> it's two two bass drums. It's a, a, a line of rack toms in front of me, three floor toms. And so I'm just like, my kit is right over there. Like, can we just take this one, roll it back off and then just roll mine over there. And the guy's looking at my kit and I mean, he's looking at Jonathan's kit and he's looking at my kit and he's like, dude, like hey, you're a drummer. Aren't you like, come on, man, I'm giving you a shot. This is what everybody wants. And it's like, I got a six piece kit with two snare drums and like five cymbals. This is like a 18 piece drum kit with like, and he's like, dude, like, come on. I'm like, I'd mother, much rather just play my kit. So he's looking at me like I'm crazy. He's got no faith in me at this point. Cause he's like, <laughs> he's like, man, this dude's about to blow it. 
So they rolled my drums out. Keyboard player. Uh, I started checking my drums. I'm, I'm starting like getting tones and kind of putting my building my kit up. And the keyboard player sitting there, and he's like listening at me play, and he's like, "Yo, dude, like, oh man, this this is gonna be interesting." It's like, interesting, yeah, man. So he's like, "Uh, he's like, man, do you know any of this cameo stuff?" And I'm like, "I, I know whatever y'all I've ever heard on the radio. I know, you know, um, Candy. I know maybe one or two other songs, but you know." I know, I know, I know, I don't know y'all B-side records. I don't know enough to play y'all for a show. So he starts like talking me through the show. So he's telling me, um, what's his name? Black, uh, black man. Black, uh, is it David? That's not David Black. It's not Don Blackman. It's Ronald, Ron Blackman, maybe the lead singer. Okay. I can't, whatever his first name is. So he's like, uh, yeah, man, you know, he's very, very, meticulous about these, you know, about these drum parts, you know, so, oh. you know, he's gonna, you know, that this one groove, the first, I can't remember what the first song was, but it had this very, he was very particular about that. So I'm like, he's like, man, you know, you'll probably be cool as long as you remember those, you know, these little, little patterns or whatever. So now it's just me and this guy and a sound engineer and a stage manager in the room. He's showing me a couple of things. He's like talking me through the gig. And of course, I'm just being me. So I'm just playing. And I started throwing. And he's like, yeah, man. Yes. Okay. Man, do that. Play that. It's like, bro, we'd love to hear it. Like, yes. Like, yeah, man. Yeah, we need that kind of energy, right? So he's like taking me through the songs, man, and all of this. Wait, that's the keyboard player, right? right? That this gave is the you that okay? keyboard player. This oh, is the keyboard I player. See. Okay. This is the keyboard player. Yep. You see where this is going already. <laughs> so band starts coming in there. The band starts, you know, falling in at a certain point. And by whatever time, you know, Blackman comes in. It's probably 6, 7, 30 in the morning. He comes in with a glass of cognac, smoking a cigar. It's 6, 30 a.m. It's a cruise. So, you know, hey, I ain't, you know, but I'm like, man, <laughs> you know. So he comes in and he starts uh, walking me through. He, start, he starts, he asks me, he says, hey, man, do you know any of, you know, the tunes or whatever? And I said, well, my man over here was just taking me through some of the stuff, you know, he's taking me through the opening song. I said, I, I probably kind of know that much of that, like the first two or three songs. He told me how y'all get to him. You know, he's like, okay. So he says, uh, he says, all right, well, count them off and let's see how far we can get. Count the songs off, count them off. And we start playing and I'm cool. And the first minute I go for like the little, just, color a little trinklet i throw a little splash tom in there and he's like hold stop wait a mf in a minute and then he lights into me bro man what the f are you doing man what are you playing man and, hi, and i'm and i'm like i'm like man i i'm just, my bad bro i was like i thought it was cool i'm not i didn't i didn't know how tight you wanted i thought you like a little color and he was like, man, he asked me, he's like, you ever played with James Brown? And I was like, bro, look, look at me. I'm in my 20s. No, I haven't played with James Brown. So, man, he's, I mean, he's lighting me up, man. He's lighting me up. And so I said to him, I said, uh, I said, well, man, you know what? I said, I, I can play it as simple as you want it. I said, you know, I said, the keyboard player here was telling me it was cool to, you know, open up a little bit. And he said, who told you that? I said, he did. And the keyboard player is looking straight ahead like this. He wouldn't even look at me. He wouldn't look at black men. He's just looking ahead like, I don't know this guy. I've never seen him in my life. He never even like looked at my, looked my way, never even acknowledged like, this so. Is giving, this is giving drum line watery. <laughs> <laughs> so, so from there on, man, black men just kind of had it out for me. He's just kind of like, he's like, uh, He's like, yeah, man, you know, you gotta, you gotta play this, you gotta play this stuff tight, man. You gotta play it tight, and you gotta, you know, no, I don't want no, no chops or nothing. So, 
man. And then he started like, then the bass player started ganging up on me. Like him and the bass player was taking turns. Mm. So the bass players telling me, you know, we get to one of the ballads. We get to first. We get to Sparkle, which is a cameo ballad. And so Blackman's looking at me and says, "Oh no!" The bass player looks at me and says, "He says we start this song, man." He said, man, we, we, we go in. We said, we balls to the wall. So he says, and when I kick my foot in the air, you got to crash on the one. And I said, what? Mm. And man, I, I can't say the way he said it to me after I asked him that. But man, he gritted his teeth. <laughs> He's just like, you going to ask that when I kick my foot in you better crash the one. So I'm like. So they count the song off. One, two, three, three, dum, 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 boom, hey, spot, God. And he's giving the whole Verdeen White thing. He's double time on the bass. Kick. You know what I'm saying? I got to catch this crash, man. It was, they had me in sound check until about 9 30 in the morning, bro. So oh. uh, finally, I get to the, I get, I get to my room, bro. I'm beat. And um, the manager calls my room. And says, "Hey, so um, okay, we you know we ple- appreciate you, you know, stepping in for the gig for us. So uh, we need to talk some business." So like, yeah, 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 we need we definitely need to do that. <laughs> yeah. So she says, uh, "So uh, we're thinking such and such amount of money." And I was like, "And she's like, how do you feel about that?" And I was like, "I don't feel about that." <laughs> so I said, "I said, listen." I said, I'm supposed to be on this boat for three days vacation. And before I work, I'm supposed to be on this boat for three days before I even start working. I said, y'all just have me in the sound check. And I got my brains wrecked out. You know, Blackman's giving me a hard time. Blackman even in the sound check even got on the drums, bro. He's like, get off the drums. You can't play. So he wants to play one of the ballads, man. He's telling me, I it's like, I don't know if you're going to be able to play this ballad. And I'm like, bro, I'm like, it's not that complicated. Just, oh, you got to just tell me what the groove is. Tell me what the beat is. I mean, it's. For for drums on cameo song is four and eight bars. Everything is in four and eight bar increments. So, but he was he was lighting me up, man. And I, you know, it was just really about and 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 let me say this: it was really just about those guys spend so much time crafting their music. You can't make them believe somebody can grasp it in two or three hours. They spend a lifetime crafting it. You know what I'm saying? So, I got it, whatever. But so I'm talking to the manager on the phone, and she's like. You know, so what do you think about this number? I was like, I don't think about that number. Like, this is not a number that ever came to my mind. So I'm like, this is what I'm thinking. And I think this is what's fair. I said, and so she's like, oh, this is highway robbery. And I said, it's not highway robbery, ma'am. I'm like, come on. I know, Jonathan, I, I know what y'all want him to be on this boat for two days. So, you know, um, that's a fraction of what he's going to get. You know, I'm, I'm being way, I'm being courteous, you know. So, um, so she, they finally called me back. They called, she said, I got to call Blackman. I got to let him know. Black, Black, she says, you know, Blackman said, we don't have no choice. So we're going to pay you. So <laughs> I said, all right, cool. So we talk to discuss the money. Well, I get down to the venue. I get down to the theater to play the gig and they say all black, of course, you know, like that's all I have anyway. So I showed up with a pair of black, black jeans and I've got like a, black button up shirt like with like a black button up shirt like from like banana republic or something you know what i'm saying and it's like a it's like a it's i almost look like i was going to like uh i mean i look like i play gospel music i don't look like i play for cameo i'm like i play gospel music that's the black i had you know yeah. and so um uh the guy comes uh aaron bass player Walks past me and he goes, "Is that what you're wearing on stage?" I was like, uh, "Yeah." He's like, "Wardrobe, wardrobe." Man, some lady comes zipping past me with this cart. <laughs> she just comes flying past me with this cart. I don't know how this happened so fast, but the cart just flew like somebody pushed it and somebody was running behind his wardrobe. Goes, <clears throat> stops right here. He's flipping through there. Here, put this on grabs this leather vest so i'm like all right fine so i take the leather vest and i put it on he look at me he's like hey what are you doing and i was like i'm putting the vest on hey man take the shirt off 
put the vest on. I said, man, look, this is where it's about to stop right here, bro. <laughs> I'm not going out here bare chest in front of you. I'm not I'm not putting this leather vest on bare chested. You know, the cup is enough, bro. Like, y'all, y'all didn't know why y'all worried about me. Like, nobody's going to pay attention to me when you got that cup on with this with these leather pants, bro. Give, give me a break. Oh, so, I, oh. mm. that was, uh, and, and so, that was probably one of my craziest gigs. It was a hard gig. Mm. The second night was a little bit easier, but the black men gave me, like, a hard time. And they called me, actually, for, like, I, play, I played, like, one other gig with them. But I don't think anybody told him that I was coming. Okay. And uh, they called me like one other time after that. Uh, it was a club in L.A. And man, he he saw my face sitting on those drums when he walked in the venue, and he was not excited. And so I knew for sure that they would. <laughs> I'm like, they ain't never gonna call me again. Um, so that was one of my crazy stories, man. Um, and again, <laughs> again, from everything for like from like wardrobe, but there's a lot that I'm leaving out because, you know, I just, I don't feel comfortable saying some of the stuff that was said, I, but, I get it. I get uh, it. but you know, like I said, um, one of the things that I had just had to take into consideration, um, was that guys like that, they spend lifetimes, you know, a lifetime. And, and it was enlightening, you know, for me, even from going there, I don't think I had, I don't think I had to start playing for Ronald yet. I hadn't started playing for Ronald yet. So, once I once I experienced that, it made me it, it helped me to understand just how serious people take their music. You know what I'm saying? And when that's all they play, you know what I'm saying? When we, we're musicians, guys like us, side men, we play different music every week. We play somebody else's music every week, and it's like, man, bro, show me your song. Let's go, okay? Like it's not that big of a deal. But these guys have spent their lives there, and, and it's all the music they play. You know what I'm saying? Um, it's, it's all the music they play and they just take it that they hold it very serious. They hold it. It's sentimental. It's, it's everything to them. So as much as I was kind of like, bro, just show me the eight bar groove and get it. I mean, to them, they spent, I mean, crafting songs, man. Well, I talked to, I talked to Ernie Isley about how they crafted songs like between the sheets and footsteps in the dark. Or Who's that lady? They were intentional about every single thing that's played on those records, man. You know, the multiple guitar parts with them going in in opposite directions. You know what I'm saying, rhythmically and melodically and core from from progression standpoint. It's a lot that goes. It, it's they those guys spend a lot of time. You know, um, and that's something that doesn't happen in gospel music. We're we're detailed, mm-hmm. but we don't. You know what I'm saying? Like the layers. The, the, when we have layers, a lot of times, some of it is doing the same thing. You know what I'm saying? It's just making it a little bit. It's, it's just making it fatter. You know what I'm saying? Building on the sound. But they, when they have layers, they all have parts. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So uh, for them, it's not a man. Just show it to me. It's like man, I. It took my. I spent days in the studio figuring out exactly what the drum part needed to do. And you're not going to diminish it to just say, just give it to me and give me your eight bar groove. So it's it's a little bit, it's a lot deeper than that for them. So I, I walked away with an understanding. It was crazy. You know what I'm saying? It was, yeah. it was definitely weird, but that's one of my, that was probably one of my craziest gigs. Yeah. You definitely, you flowing into the next topic. That's some, that's some prophetic <laughs> stuff going on. <laughs> so uh, before I move that up, you know, what's funny. Um, I got two things about that. Your experience with that one. I, it just hit me. I, the next time somebody say the, the price is highway robbery, I just thought of something. Just tell them, don't worry, we're avoiding toes. <laughs> <laughs> we're avoiding toes. Don't worry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, the, the vest. Now I can't Man. unsee. I can't unsee Sugarfoot on Drumeo. Oh yeah, that's oh yeah, that's his vibe all day. That's 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 Jonathan's vibe all day. He dressed like that going to Starbucks. <laughs> Jonathan, where you going? It's, it's nine thirty. You got a gig this morning. You got on the, you got on ripped jeans and boots, <laughs> and you oil, oiled up with a vest on. You got a gig? Nah, I'm going to get some coffee. <laughs> That's how he yeah. trash. That's, I mean, he's a, he's bro. He's the he's a rock star drummer. You know what I'm saying? That's that's yeah, that's, that's how he dresses. And it's a 
for certain people, that's just that's they they look for that. Like, yeah, I saw you know some, what I'm saying. I saw some crazy outfits at Nam one time. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yes, man. I mean, those rock guys, man. They, I mean, they step out the house. Even I mean, Ernie and Ronald Isley. You know what I'm saying? You don't catch, you don't catch Ronald out in no, you know, no jeans. You know, you say he's Mr. Biggs, 24 hours a day. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. He Versace shades. You know, he might if he if he relaxed, he might have on a two piece walking suit or something. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. You know, but you're not going to catch him out there. You know, no, that's that's who he is. And you know, artistry. They there's a very thin line between personality and artistry for those guys. You know what I'm saying? Some of them, yeah. it it just crosses over. So. Yeah, that's yeah. I, I'm learning that the hard way when it comes to uh, even with on the social media, where yeah. like I, if I'm, and I, I, I'm not, I'm not like I, I still don't like think this way, but I am noticing on social media like some stuff changing, like on the fact that like I used to play on uh, old it was one of my first drum sets, and then I get a certain amount of subscribers, and then I'm getting calls like, hey. You can't be seen on camera with this no more. And yeah. It's, but yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. It's, it's, I mean, you know, it comes with it, man. You know, yep. it's what comes with it. Yeah. Yep. It's like, you know, you get an NBA contract. I mean, bro, Kawhi Leonard got to be the only guy in the NBA driving the Chevy anything. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, yeah. and it's just like, nobody don't do that no more, man. It's like, nah, bro. <laughs> You know, and he got he got he got a he got a whip too, but he's still driving like his Tahoe, bro. <laughs> That's crazy. That's crazy. It's like but and he ain't even driving like what well, he got the one he been had from college. <laughs> That's crazy. That's not it off. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So Okay. So uh yeah, let's move into where you was going, right into the next topic. This is a big one. Uh, wait, pause. Wait a minute. <laughs> okay. I don't want to say anything. All right. What is pocket? I know All right. Can, yeah. Well, uh, let, let's get this one out the way because you kind of your story kind of explained because I asked this question before and I wanted to get the easy answer out. Basically, if you're playing for an artist, whatever he's asking you to do. We understand that that's that's pocket. It's whatever he's requiring and what his vision is and all of that. I'm trying to dive deeper into th- this statement. So uh, yeah, I mean, if okay, if we're talking jazz and someone says what is pocket, right? Mm-hmm. That involves multiple notes. That's in, that's a lot of notes. Yep. If we're talking blues, that's still in, a, you know a, a solid blues shuffle. I mean, if you just look at the polyrhythms, you know what I'm saying, himself, it still involves a lot of notes and a lot of rhythms. Mm-hmm. If we're talking pop music, minimal notes. Mm-hmm. You know, if we're talking gospel music, it can involve, you know, a few notes, a few more notes. Um, so to me, pocket is not about the notation and how many notes is being played. It starts with servicing the music. Mm-hmm. But what pocket is, is basically the fundamentals of drumming. It is the support of the music. Mm -hmm. So to me, pocket is like, it's solid time. It's fluid movement through the drum kit. Mm -hmm. So if it's jazz, that means the the eighth note hi-hat and the spang lane on the ride, they're, they're working together. It's an engine moving. It's no breaks in it. It's no gaps in it. It's running water. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? When I say fluid, I mean like running water. You turn water on and it just like this. It, you don't hear that. You know, when you start seeing, well, you ever turn on water and, and like so after it, it been off for a little while and it cut on and then it's like, you know what I'm saying? It's none of that. It's fluid, the pocket. It's no gaps, no breaks in it. So whatever that is, you know what I'm saying? But it starts with, it starts with, the, whatever the backbeat is and whatever the foundation is of it. And then it starts with the, um, with time. Mm-hmm. So wh- whatever time you, if we're playing, if we're playing in five, if we're playing in 13, if we're playing in four, you know what I'm saying? Whatever we're playing in, it's consistent. It doesn't move. 
you know what I'm saying? You could build your house on top of it. And, you know, even with, you know, even if you're not playing with a click or a loop, um, and there's a difference between a click and a loop, by the way, because people are calling yeah. loops click now. Say, <laughs> I don't know how, how we got it. into that. Say it but, the <laughs> <laughs> this, that like, they like, hit the click track. That's a drum loop, lady. All right, go over there. And <laughs> But anyway, but even if you're not playing to some kind of time mechanism, you know, um, you know, you should still, it's, the timing should still feel even, you know what I'm saying? It shouldn't feel, it's not going to feel perfect because you're not a machine, but it should feel even, you know what I'm saying? So it's solid time, it's support and foundation for the groove, whatever it is. That to me is pocket. That to me is pocket. And like I said, it's not about, to me, pocketing is not about limited, a limited amount of notes. You know, mm -hmm. it's about, the, it's, it's yeah. about servicing whatever the genre is, you know what I'm saying? And providing that. And like I said, if it's jazz, that could be a lot of notes, you know what I'm saying? Depending on well, you, you add comp, because you can be comping in jazz that, and, and, and you're looking at notes and it's like, that's a lot going on, but it's a conversation happening and you're in the pocket, you know what I'm saying? You playing a solid, you know, shuffle. That's a lot. You know, you can figure in the, the 60, the, 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 to do to do change a tank change a tank that's a lot of notes mm -hmm. so you could be looking at it if you look at it technically you could be reading it's like i see a bunch of notes that's they're still pocket playing you know so um that's my idea of pocket my idea of pocket is the foundation and time like consistent foundation and time supported for the music i 100 percent agree i even I, I play devil's advocate with my subscribers all the time. The ones that like, um, if they, if 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 they hear a chop, they they are they run to the comments. This ain't pocket. You be, you need to be playing straight. This that. And I'm like, okay. So if I'm just playing straight, and then we end in the song, and it's a big just a big crescendo, mm -hmm. and I'm on the cymbals because I haven't worked on my singles, I can't even do this. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah. I'm like, it, and and like uh, I've been reacting to a lot of African drummers, and I'm noticing like mm. they praise more notes, and, I, and I'm I'm like you mess around, come there and just play straight. They gonna think you ain't saved. Oh man, no, like, you get. I mean, man, uh, man, Thomas Pridgen turned me into onto some like, uh, yeah, Fela. You're, you're a prophet. That you, man, you're, you're in my list. You're in my <laughs> <laughs> man. Tom, one one night. Me and Thomas are texting back and forth on on this might have been on like this may have been on like Twitter. This is years ago. Okay. It's like two or three o'clock in the morning. Thomas was up. I was up. He's tweeting something, talking to something. And I'm like, oh, man, I'm not hip to this. And he starts he, he like gets on me like, yo, you got to get into some other rhythms, Calvin. Like, yo, get into like Fela. I think the guy's Fela Kuti. Um, and. Thomas is, bro, and Thomas is, man, He that dude is heavy. Say what you want. I don't care. Like him or don't like him. That's a drum playing somebody, dog. Oh, yeah, and he yeah. studied, man. He, I mean, not he's not just a guy that can play the drums. He got, he know a lot. He knows a lot, man. He, he, he knows a lot, man. He, he can play and like the stuff he told me to listen to and the times I've, you know, I've, I go and listen to like, I've sat down with him or I've seen videos of him or I've watched or I asked him about stuff. Man, the stuff he'd be talking, I'd be like, yo, man, this this dude is not a game. So yeah, Tom, he he's the, the African rhythms. And then I was in Paris doing um doing uh, the Wiki Drum Fest, and there were some African drummers there, and they were playing some African drums and things like that, showing me the African rhythms. And again, like I was saying about how the uh how with the Isleys, like Ernie was breaking down some of those parts to me and one part is going this way and the other part. Rhythmically, same thing with the African drum, you know what I'm saying, music, but rhythmically, man, one thing is doing this and it's like, and it's all, it's probably where we get the paradiddles from because it's kind of like this hand does this, this hand does that, this hand does this, this, this but it, it kind of works, okay. you know, it's where we get, you know, our rudiments from, but a lot of it's like the same thing. It's like, hey, I start going this way, I'm playing the same rhythm. I'm playing the same rhythm, but I'm starting this way. And then we end up coming, you know what I'm saying? But a lot of it's it's, it's a lot of heavy stuff, man. And that was and that was our way of communication too. So, you know. Yeah. Um yeah. yeah. 
Yeah. Uh, Marcus Hassan. Uh, it's Benjamin. What's his last name? Oh man, I don't. I, I don't want. I, it's not. Ben, oh man, this is another African drummer, uh, Benjamin something. I've read to him okay. twice. Uh, he doing buzz rolls on chimes. Man, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they be, bro. They be they be out there, man. They be out there, yeah. Oh man. Okay. Yeah. So uh, yeah, we 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 just covered pocket. We definitely just covered <laughs> pocket. Um, so. Um, this is a two part. This one's a two part. But um, I, I was, I'm asking you, how do you prepare for auditions? But question, ha, uh, like, what have you auditioned for? <laughs> <laughs> I kind of figured. I'm like, wait, this question. I don't know. <laughs> Man, I I don't I don't remember. I I can't remember auditioning. Um. I remember I sending a videotape in when I when when they were looking for drummers for Usher. Every oh. drummer and a lot of drummers in America was sending sending around videotapes, uh, sending their videotapes in for the for the Usher gig. I think I sent a videotape to Gerald to give to Valdez. I don't even ever know if it ever saw the light of day once they saw Aaron Spears play. Yeah. I don't know if they ever looked at anybody else like. I don't know if I, I think it was like, why do we need to see anybody else? Yeah. And so I, I, I like, I remember, so I like, and, and when they, they told me that, and when they told me to audition, they were just like sending some videotapes of you playing music. So I had like some clips of me playing with like John P. Key. And then I made like a video of me just at home, like shedding. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, I don't think I play. I didn't play a Usher song. I did play a Usher song. I did play a Usher song. I'll be interested to see. I'm gonna find out, ask Gerald if he still has that video. He don't throw away anything, okay. so he may still have it somewhere. But yeah, I haven't. I haven't had many auditions. Um, I, I haven't. So I would imagine I auditioned. I I, I auditioned for R. Kelly. I did audition for R. Kelly, and I auditioned. I didn't, I didn't have much time to do to prepare. I was on a gig the way I was playing with Dave Hollister. I had met R. Kelly at a studio maybe two months before, and the guy, I think the guy lost my number, and oh. R. Kelly told him, like, uh, man, they, they had it. They had got another drummer, and R. Kelly didn't didn't like the guy, and he came in the rehearsal and was like, where's the guy I asked for? And uh, Donnie was like, oh, man, um, man, I lost that cast number. And so Donnie was like, um, t- little Tony had got, little Tony was in the band by the end. And he was like, man, I can't, he was like, I, I lost the cast number. So I just remember his name was Calvin. And little Tony's like, Calvin, Calvin Rogers. It's like, yeah. And so, um, they called, so they they called me. I just happened to be not far from R. Kelly's studio, doing a rehearsal with Dave Hollister. And then they Lil Tony came by there and they said, "Hey, we want you to come and audition." Lil Tony came by on his break and brought me a cassette tape, um, and was like, "Hey, man, this is the song that they that that uh that they finna put out. This is a single that they get ready to put out. It was R. Kelly's uh, I Wish." And so he was like, "Uh." This is the song they get ready. They put to put out as a single. This is what we've been practicing. And I said okay, so uh, I got in my car. I listened to it backwards and forwards. Just had to kind of learn the patterns, and then I just kind of made sure I, I felt comfortable with the tempo because I know um, I knew that like it was heavy on having to be able to play with a click and drum loops. So uh, I made sure that I was I was prepared for that. I went there. I knew the pattern. I knew the pattern, the drum pattern, and they asked me when the guy asked me, he said, man, can you know if I asked you to solo over this song, like, could you do that? And I was like, yeah. And then he said, all right, go ahead and take take eight bars. And I took eight bars at the end and, I, you know, I did it. And I didn't play anything other than what was there for the um, parts. 
And so, uh, and that's how I got the gig. So that's probably the, the one time I, I can say I auditioned. Um, it, and so that's what it was. That's what it consists, consisted of. It's so crazy how like it went back to the what is pocket examples with the, you played the pattern, you played, but you also prepared for when they let you do something. Yep. And bro, they never ever asked me ever to so nobody said solo to me ever again. <laughs> I played with Rob for two years. <laughs> nobody ever mentioned the word solo after that. No, never. They never asked me even open up to do this, do that. They never that's just I mean, Rob wasn't into he wasn't into hearing that. He wanted to hear what he recorded every single night. He wanted to hear the way he recorded every single night. I mean, I was almost like they were fighting with me like it ain't no crash on the downbeat. I'm like, we got this big old explosion and pyro coming in, and y'all had this big old interest, and then this groove coming in, chicka 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 chicka. You want me to go? Cat, y'all want me to come in like boom? Cat. They was like, yeah, I guess. Okay, all right. But I mean, that was one of the things, and man, that was one of the times that uh. I really start paying attention to the things that I did out of like habit and, you know, like, you know, as a drummer, you do this a lot. Mm -hmm. The hi-hat, you know, I was just doing it and couldn't control it. And then this guy was like, yo man, what's this triplet thing you keep playing on hi-hat? Like, it's Mm -hmm. not happening. You know what I'm saying? So, and I was just doing it, wouldn't even be paying attention to it, you know? Uh, So uh, that got me into really studying, studying Ricky Lawson because for one, Ricky, I would listen to Ricky. He would go 8, 16, 24, 32, 48, 56, 68. He would go so many bars and not crash on a downbeat. He just, and it would just be like out of habit or out of just norm, like formality, just for me to every eight bars hit a crash on a one. And then he started being intentional. But then listening to him, I started being intentional about it and just not moving like that. So now I can play, I can play this and not just go. Cause now I'm paying attention. I'm, I'm intentional about every single thing I'm doing. So uh, that's, that's, that's that, big. that really got me, you know, that got me paying attention, playing that gig. Definitely got me paying attention to detail, got me paying attention to what I'm playing, you know, and stuff like that. So that's that's a that's a that's a gem, y'all. Like mm-hmm. take take note to that. Cause like I noticed what's crazy when it comes to I didn't really understand how important a lot of my plan was like made like uh what am I trying to say? How much my plan wasn't making much sense to the music I was playing until I started mixing. Where I, uh, I, yeah. I started noticing that my hi hat was open a little too long, like it, <laughs> it, it drives me crazy now, and it's just yes. Uh. But yeah, that's yeah, crazy. man, you one of the things, man, you make friends with an engineer. You know what I'm saying? They will certainly, they certainly get you for one. They're gonna get you thinking about what you're doing as a drummer. Uh, as, as a drummer, and then you, you start mixing your own drums, you start cleaning your own drums up. You know, it's something about my, my microphones. Like they, they, they're the they're the biggest truth tellers there are. They never, <laughs> like, lie. They never, they never lie. lie. They never <laughs> lie. You know what I'm saying? So, uh, yeah. yeah, man. When you get you you those microphones, man. Whew. I'll never forget one of my first studio, one of my first studio experiences, man, and thinking that I was good on drums and then going in the studio and just feeling like I'm listening to how I'm like, oh my God, I was embarrassed. Like, I sound like a beginner, you know? And I was thinking like, man, I'm, I'm good. I should be here, you know? I'm in a studio and I'm like, man, wavering with the click looseness, the stuff I'm hearing between the hi-hat and the snare drum, my, you know, my ghost notes, my subdivisions on snares is uneven. For a few bars, they swing in. The other bars, they straight. I'm listening at that. I'm like, oh, man. So, um, 
that's why I always when I talk, talk talk to people, they always tell you know, I tell them about what my practice regimen is and how I used to play two hundred bars a day in pocket. Cop, just watch the screen. What's my next segment? <laughs> what is your <laughs> like, oh my gosh? <laughs> well, you know what I'm saying. I don't know if you know I'm a preacher. I mean, I am an elder, so I do stay in the spirit. <laughs> Ooh, you got me looking but, like Shannon Sharp over here. <laughs> uh, but yeah, man, I was, I mean, after my first time in the studio, I mean, I was like, I, I, I started working hard on it. 200 bars every day of, of pocket playing and whatever I wanted to work on, uh, whatever I worked on. So if I wanted to work on, you know, I, at first I was just doing 200 bars of straight back beats. No sub, no, no extra stuff on the stair drum. Making sure every downbeat on that snare drum is even. Making sure it's solid. Making sure it's there. You know what I'm saying? And making sure that it's 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 that I I'm comfortable with playing times and that I, playing time, solid time, and then I could do it no matter what the distraction is. So I don't care what the distraction is. If somebody plays a note that throws me off or a fine woman walk past this booth or, you know what I'm saying, if a, a drop of water fall down on me, so whatever happens, I'm, that pocket does not move. <laughs> and then from there, you know what I'm saying, I do 200 bars in straight pocket, then I do 200 bars with my subdivisions in my left hand. You know what I'm saying? Or I do my, two, two, uh, my 200 bars adding something else on the kick drum, whatever. But I spent a lot of time doing that. I spent a lot of time doing that. Uh, because, and, and like I said, you know, going in the studio, you know, my, those microphones, they are truth tellers. So once I start listening at what, um, what was coming back, the playback, I'm like, man, and hearing stories about Ricky Lawson, hearing stories about once I started studying even Terry Baker, um, you know, Michael Baker's another one, uh, but guys that were here in Chicago, Teddy Campbell, um, 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 Felix Polar, Oscar, Oscar Seaton, man, those dudes, even Ray Beatty, Pastor Ray Beatty now, you know, those guys, man, they could go in the studio and they could lock grooves up. And I was just, I, again, after going in the studio my first time and hearing those guys, you know, Jeremy Haynes, I, I, I remember playing a, a, a Ricky Diller record or playing a song for Ricky Diller that maybe Donald Lawrence wrote, and I think Jeremy was on the, uh, Jeremy was maybe on the demo, or maybe Donald had recorded it with somebody or something, and just hearing Don, uh, how, how Jeremy Haynes was getting through it, and he's playing with a loop, and I'm like, man, he's coming back on the one all the time, it's just, it was, um, it was incredible, man, so that, those are the things that I made me want to start practicing execution, uh, and make, make me want to practice precision. And so those are the things I work on practicing when I practice, I'm working on precision. I'm working on execution. I'm working on dynamics. You know what I'm saying? Um, mm -hmm. and, and having those and, and being open and listening to other music, being open to other genres. You know, if you want to practice on your dynamics, you want to work on your touch, study some Will Kennedy, study some jazz music, get, get into some Will Kennedy, man, get into some Tony Williams. I did not know this for a long time, and I've studied Will Kennedy for years. But Will Kennedy does not play a double stroke role. Never plays. Never plays a double stroke role. He, everything he plays is singles. Tony is, and he got it from studying Tony Williams. So if you go and watch Will Kennedy, you see him play a buzz role, bro. All singles. Can you imagine that? And if you go think or go watch, a, listen to a Yellow Jacket song, and you hear the hear a buzz roll, and you realize he's playing singles and not doubles. Wow. So. Um, okay. those things, I mean, you talk about sensitivity and touch. I, I don't think it's nobody better than him. You talk about solid solidarity, the fundamentals of drums, which is timing and foundation, Ricky Lawson and Terry Baker, you know, those are two guys you talk about feel and vibe and, you know, bringing energy, you, you get Teddy Campbell, you know what I'm saying? There's tons of guys that study, you know, um, and now, you know, you got some, now the, the young guys who possess a lot of these things. What I love about guys like Lacey Comer, Quasi, Tucson, Clint, my cousins, Clemens and Jermaine, uh, Josiah. You running through this list very fast. <laughs> <laughs> Why do I have 
have topics. <laughs> <laughs> the things I love about these young guys, man, is that they possess a lot of those qualities, you know what I'm saying, and those characteristics. Mm -hmm. and, and for a long time, we were beating up on the young drummers like, y'all ain't, y'all ain't, but some of these young guys, the ones that's out there working, no, they got it, bro. They yeah. got it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, and they got the chops, too. But I love the fact that I can hear them and I can, man, 16, 32 bars go by and they just wearing that pocket out. Mm -hmm. And they just, and, and it's, the groove has become hypnotizing. And so by the time they play the littlest thing, like if they just play the simplest thing, I'm like, oh, yeah. But then when they come out, they come out the gate. So they don't, they don't lay the whole joint out for me, lay the whole song out, just wearing the groove out. And then somebody give them the last eight bars and they just take me to the lobby like, oh, my God. <laughs> so, man, I, you know, but that's what I, I, I love that. And I love that I'm hearing guys that are still focusing on what the the what our job is as drummers. And that's to for me. That's what I practice on now. I think that I think I'm the drummer that I'm going to be now. I'm 45. I don't think there's any surprises, you know what I'm saying? Uh, <laughs> but uh, but I practice on, you know, being consistent at this point. At this point, I want to be consistent. Uh, I want to be solid on the drums. I want to be consistent. I still want to be creative, I, you know what I'm saying? I want to be able to be like, oh, he can still pull, pull some, you know, pull out something cool and slick. And I, I listen to some of those guys and see most of the times I listen at them and I'll be like, I try to end up playing something that they play and I come out with my own version or variation of it. But uh, those are the things I practice on, man. And I think as long as you keep reaching in, you know, uh, mm -hmm. you know, you, 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 you'll always be in the conversation. You always be in the runnings. Yeah. Well, the moment you stop reaching, the moment you stop, like, I got it. I'm good. no. You, it's over with. It's over with. I made that it's mistake. Oh, I made that mistake. This is quick. I made that mistake. Oh my goodness. Really? So uh I mean I was I was young and dumb oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. and crazy. And I, I I mean I I I don't I was around too many people that was like they, they had that same I'm I, I I'm a, I'm at my the level I'm gonna be at energy. And when I tell you, I, I was fresh off of watching uh, Berkeley Shed Sessions, mm -hmm. and uh, my brother went to William Patterson University for uh, jazz, and he had called me. He was like, yo, we, we doing the shed. So I'm like, who coming? He was like, oh, I, got, I just got two other drummers. He didn't tell me they were jazz majors, but he was like, I got two other drummers. I was like, okay. I came there expecting to just embarrass everybody. So... I get on, like, we got the drums there. This first, right when we was about to start, because I, like, I just actually uh, went to a clinic where uh, Mike Johnston, Spanky, and Jeff Davis were doing in, in Newark, New Jersey. Mm. And uh, Mike Johnston taught taught us how to play in 7-8. I'm like, okay, <laughs> I, I got this. I got this. such a basic understanding yeah. of it. So yeah. I, I was like, hey, let, let's play in 7-8. And they, they, they were like, okay, cool. I, I'm like, Okay, they agreed too fast. What is this? Yeah. <laughs> so I, I go like that. He was like, he, they stopped me. They're like, let's play faster. I'm like, what? <laughs> then it pa do 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 One playing and four or four on top of that just hit me. Mm -hmm. I'm like, yeah. I got to the point where you know you 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 nervous, you embarrassed. Can't nobody hear you. Like, oh, yeah, hey, man, I can't, Josh, play harder. I can't hear you. I'm like, I'm, I'm playing. I'm doing it. <laughs> that was a long night. Uh, that was a long night. But, uh, yeah. I, 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 man, I understand that, you know, when you get, especially guys, I can imagine the guys at Berkeley, you know, the interpretation of the, the one and being able to play over it and, you know, for church guys, you know, when we play, all of us, when we when we talked about seven, we all played it the same way. You know what I'm saying? We all played. Man, them guys play seven so many different ways. You know, it's like, like, man, wait a minute. I thought we said seven. Yeah, this is seven, bro. <laughs> like, we we don't know. We we were just, we once we learned it, we just learned it by skipping the beat. You know what I'm saying? That's what we used to call it. We skipped the beat. Uh mm -hmm. 
but those guys know how to count it and manipulate it. And you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I can understand that. I, I, I remember one of the first times I said, sat down with a guy that, uh, that was, uh, uh, educated, like schooled as a drummer. And one of the first times we got together and had a jam session and man, the stuff he was playing, I was just like, I, like, man, what? you're not just playing like no stuff you just came up with. Like you, and he was breaking down, like, you know, all the forms and a lot of stuff, man, you know, uh, a lot of guys, I probably most of them are uh, most guys. What I found is most guys, they kind of, find one or two licks that they know how to manipulate mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying and that's that's they go to you know they just know how to play it you know a million different ways you know what i'm saying so um but finding some of those guys man who play a bunch of that stuff man they playing and or they playing all these different versions of you know uh odd odd number stroke rolls you know what i'm saying whether it be five sevens nines you know, 11s, that's, that's what those guys do. You know what I'm saying? It's like, that's their thing, you know? Uh, so I, I've, I've been there before, man. I've been there for, yeah, it's, it's enlightening. It's like a chin check. Yeah, it is. It's, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 and I got, I got humbled. I got humbled very fast and they, it was a while before they called me back. <laughs> it was a while. <laughs> But like, it, like what you were talking about, I feel like, and that's just me because maybe the age I'm at, but I, I personally feel like you invented the paradiddle diddle. Like, I, honestly, <laughs> that, honestly, I think that that should be under your name. Your <laughs> <laughs> like, that's, yeah, that's, I man, know. I um, I always tell tell people about how I I, I was watching a, a Weckle video. And this, he was playing it in a funk groove, like, ding, 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 ding. and he played it between the rod and the snare. So he just played. So he's, you know what I'm saying? He's, it was, it was, it's a groove and I'll find, I'm, I'm going to send you, I'm going to actually find a clip. Okay. Um, and then if this was the first time, this was like the first time I understood the manipulation of a drumlet, you know what I'm saying? I'm like, man, I could take one chop and I don't have to play it. Cause I think up until then I was thinking, I just always have to play something different. I didn't even know about breaking down a lick and figuring out different ways to play it. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That lick was an open, it was an eye opener for me. And it was one of the ones where I was like, oh, okay, I can just take this and I can manipulate it this way and I can, all right, cool. So I had a better understanding of it. So. Yep. Yeah, is, that, is that what I'm hearing on Possess the Land? Oh yeah, yeah. absolutely, yeah. I'm, I'm, absolutely, yeah, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, I'm gonna move on to. The, I don't even know if we can discuss this because then this this is low key. We we talking endorsements here, and I don't want to hurt nobody's feelings. Uh oh, but uh. <laughs> Just let Hilarious. me know. We, we're talking cold. Um, I I can say this. I don't have a bad thing to say mm -hmm. about any company that I formerly was associated with. Mm -hmm. Um, uh, I was with Sabian. I don't know how many years from maybe two thousand and. 2000 around 2006 i think i maybe signed with sabian i signed with sabian right before i did that uh that 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 live dvd with fred hammond at, at, at the potter's house um uh mike clemens and got in kentrick morris okay. um uh got me on with sabian we me and mike and Kendrick was, Kendrick was was playing like he was playing like a lot of smooth jazz stuff. He was playing with Najee, I think he was playing with Najee. Um, he's playing with Najee, but him and I, I think Mike Clemens introduced me to Kendrick. Um, but uh, me and Mike Clemens were spending a lot of time together on the road because. Fred and Israel were touring together a lot. 
and Mike Clemens at the time was playing with Israel and I was playing with Fred. So we were seeing each other a lot and I just started expressing to him an interest in the symbols. And um, he's like, man, you need to come on over here. You need to come on over here. And so um, I talked to, I called Spanky. And I was like, man, can you introduce me to somebody over there? He introduced me to Bobby Booze. And Bobby just didn't have the time for me. And so um, Mike Clemens said, yo, I'm going to hook you up with this guy, Kendrick. He knows all the guys. And so uh, he introduced me to a guy named Paul Salucci. And Paul called around. I told Paul, said, he's like, man, let me give me a little while. So he found out I was playing for Fred Hammond. I was a Yamaha endorser already. And um, so uh, he called Jeff Davis. And he goes, I got a call. I got Paul Salucci's from Boston. Uh-huh. He's got the heavy. <laughs> uh, he was, he, he, Paul Salucci passed some years ago, but he was, they don't make artist relations like this guy no more. You know, mm. old school, old school, old school, old school. Um, not a dig at anybody, just, mm-hmm. you know. Yep. But uh, Paul Salucci um, calls Jeff Davis. I got this guy, Calvin Rogers. I uh, plays with a gospel artist, Fred Hammond. You know him? Jeff Davis, sign him. Jeff Davis says, sign him. Mm-hmm. All right, Jeff, you said it. I'm going to do it. He calls me back. Calls me back. They give me sweet for this live DVD. This is like a week before, and I don't have no symbols. Like, I got some old beat up Zildjian. So um, it's like a week before the DVD, and they, they rush me out a bunch of symbols. And, uh, so I had a wonderful relationship with them. I had some ideas about growing ideas and products and sounds. Um, and um, when I spoke to the powers to be there, um, they, they just, I don't think they were ready for me to be a part of that kind of conversation. Um, and so um, I had met Chris Brewer from, from Minel. Mm-hmm. I had met him a, a number of times, Sput introduced me to him. Sput introduced me to, I was, I happened to be in New Orleans when Snarky Puppy was recording uh, one of those family dinner, family dinner albums in okay. New Orleans. Yep. And Chris Brewer was there just hanging out with Sput. And Sput introduced me to him and Sput's like, yo, Chris, Calvin, Calvin, Chris, y'all need to make this happen. And I gave Chris my email address and he's hit me up and he's like, yo, Calvin, I really would love to get you to Nashville and let's, let's rap. And man, I blew him off. And yes, I blew him off. Like he was like, I was like, kind of just like, okay, man, cool. We get together. We're going to make it happen. And I just, he was hitting me up and then I just ended up telling him, it's like, hey man, I'm gonna kind of stay where I'm at, bro. He was like, man, I thought we were about to do something. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. he was like, man, you could have, I, I had high hopes. Like you could have just told me you weren't interested at the time. And I'm like, man, my bad. So I finally had to tell him. And so, uh, and I just kind of wanted to make that thing work with with uh, Sabian. And so I was trying to be patient over there. And uh, just as, as, man, as fate would have it, I ran into Chris again at NAM in 2017, I believe. And I was sure the guy hated my guts. <laughs> I was sure, and man, he, he me and Sputter walking around, and Sputter's like, man, I'm gonna run and go by Minel, roll with me. And I was kind of like almost like, nah, I don't know, nah, I don't want to Chris I don't want to see me. He's like, man, come on, come on. And I went there and Chris was like, hey, hey, Calvin, man, good to see you, man. How's everything going? And I'm like, it's going pretty good. And I was, I was quite like shocked that he was so kind to me, really, because I mean, because I, I literally blew the dude off. And so um, he was talking to me, and he's just like, man, you know, so how's everything going, man? Have you been doing and this and that? And he's like, I've been keeping up with you, or seeing this and hearing that. Spud's always talking about you. And I'm like, okay, cool, man. So. 
he's like, man, go go look around, man. Have a look around. We got some new stuff that came out. And I'm looking around. I'm listening at the symbols, And I'm like, man. So I had told Sput that I played this gig where I didn't. I played this gig with Fred Hammond um, in January of 2017. One of the, probably my, my last gig with Fred Hammond. Uh, it was it was a New Year's Eve gig, and then we stayed over and did like a workshop with this church's worship and arts ministry. And I didn't take any backlog with me for some reason because we playing at a church. So I'm like, I'm not gonna be switching out cymbals and you know, whatever. So I didn't take anything with me but my sticks and my in-ears. I just used what was there. And this guy had a 18 inch um, sand thin crash, the Benny Grab signature crash. Mm-hmm. Smack dab in front of me. And I I hit that symbol, man, every time I could. It sounded so good, man. I was, I fell in love with that symbol and I I sent Sput a picture of it and, and Sput was like, he was like, man, that symbol's dope. But that ain't even like, bro, you got to hear the rest of the stuff, man. <laughs> and so I had told him that. And so when I went to Nam later on, that that was like a few weeks later, because that was that was literally like the first week in June. That was June. I mean, not June, January. That was like January 1st. And a few weeks later, I was at Nam and I had told Sput, I had sent him a picture of that symbol. He's like, man, you got to hear the rest of the stuff. So Sput had told Chris, like, man, Calvin's been checking out some of the symbols, man. He played a gig and they had a minor crash, some minor crashes there. He was going crazy over it. So he's like, man, take a look around. We got some new stuff out, man. Give a look at it. I think they had just introduced the jazz series, uh, my Byzance Jazz. So I went and looked around and uh, Chris was like, Man, do you, you, you see anything you like? You hear anything you like? I'm like, yeah, man, I do. I see a lot of stuff. So he said, man, we should we do. We should. What we should do is we should really have like get together and just like you come out to Nashville and just check out some of the stuff. Like come see the warehouse. Let's put a bunch of symbols together, man. You put you a set of symbols together on a drum kit and you play them and see if you find like something that you'd be like, oh, this could be my symbol set up and see if you like it. So I was like, okay, cool. So I bought a ticket to Nashville and um uh I and I went there. Me and Chris went, hung out, just kind of got a feel for each other, went to breakfast, uh, just kind of talked, got a got the chance to know each other a little bit, and then went to the factory. And he was just like, Man, you know, so what do you like? What are you interested in? And I told I was telling him, I said, Well, man, this is what I've typically been playing. I want to have some kind of mixture between there. I'm interested in mixing darks and brights. I'm interested in mixing textures. So I want to kind of change my tone up a little bit. And I want stuff that's in between. I want some stuff that's all the way there. And I want some stuff all the way here. And so we start putting together ideas. We start putting together symbols and hi-hats. And I start playing with hi-hat combinations. One of the things with mine was that, like, I don't, one of the things I had to explain to Chris, I, I never play traditional hi-hats in the sense of hi-hat top, hi-hat bottom. I never do that. I always, and I think I told you this uh, when we first talked about, you know, you coming over, I always mix series. So, you know what I'm saying? And a lot of times my hi-hat tops are crashes. Um, And if they, and, and if I use a hi-hat, if I use a hi-hat top, it's on the bottom. So usually a lot of times I use like some kind of crash on the top and a hi-hat top on the bottom. So I was explaining that to Chris and he was telling me, well, man, you know, like some of our hi-hats are kind of built like that. I mean, even though we say it's a hi-hat bottom, it kind of made like that a lot. So I was intrigued by the fact that I could find the sound that I wanted with Mino without, by, with, by actually like taking, using their traditional setup, you know, mm-hmm. so I could take a set of hi-hats and have the sound that I, I, I dug, you know, that I wanted. Um, and so, um, just man that was like that was a couple of days and i um i i was i went i was there for like a day i spent an entire day at the factory in the warehouse and they just the chris let me play all day there man i just you know went through every symbol they had and uh and man it was the best thing about it was that you know chris was really hip to what i was doing he could tell me oh man i you know i've heard 
this symbol. I've heard you play something that sounds like this. I heard you play something that sounds like that. Do you like this? Do you like that? So he's well aware of the guys that he deals with. And I, and I really appreciated that. Yeah. Shout out. To and Chris. so, uh, shout out to Chris Brewer. Shout out to Chris. <laughs> um, and so, uh, man, I was like, man, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to jump out on the ledge. And I felt like when I did it, I felt like I was like, I definitely, I didn't have the anxiety that I had with switching companies any other time. Uh, I had a certain piece about it this time. like, And then when I took the cymbals out on the road, because I was playing the cymbals out on the road for two or three months before uh, Mino had made the announcement. And so, and I was digging them, you know what I'm saying? And, um, and I was I was really, like, I was loving the way they showed up on the road. And, uh, man, I just had a certain calmness, like, yo, this is going to be cool. And so... Um, it ended up being a big deal when I when they announced it. But uh I, you know, I've met all the guys there over at Mino, uh Mr. Mom Roland, Mino, um, Alex, Mino. Um, I've met all those guys there, man. They they were really nice people, really cool people. Um and uh Udo, um, and all those guys, man. It's great guys over there. And I just I dig it, man, you know. The relationship I have with Mino, all the companies that I work with, Mino, Pearl, me and Chris Hart with Remo. I know it's cliche and everybody fights the whole, you know, and this ain't family, this is business. And it is business. Part of why I, part of the, the other part of one of the reasons I left Mino was a business decision. I mean, while I left the other company, while I left Sabian was part of it was a business decision. Mm -hmm. But, um, but it was also, man, just, Wanted to have that that feeling, you know what I'm saying? Like, man, you know, um, I'm, I'm not just a, a guy quota there. I'm not just a guy in the lineup. And so um, they made space for me there, and they made made sure they made space for me at Minel. And, um, and we started. The plan was always for it to be bigger and bigger and bigger. It was always for it to be that. And so for that part and for that much, man, I'm, I'm super grateful. But uh, – the product was, when, to answer your question, you say, why did I switch to Mino? The product was King first. I don't ever, well, I'm never going to be on a, you're never going to see me back in the product and you don't see me using it or see me secretly going in the closet to get something else. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So I dig this. I dig the stuff. I love that the entry level stuff and the less affordable, the less affordable, I mean, the more affordable stuff um, still sounds great. So, you know what I'm saying? Uh, there's a symbol in my setup. There's a Mino Splash in my setup. That's the Classics Custom. It's it's a splash, an eight-inch splash, probably in the store. It's $89. It's one of my it's, – it's a part of my symbol setup. <laughs> yeah. You know what I'm saying? Yep. It cuts through, you know what I'm saying? And I appreciate that about – I appreciate that about the symbols. You know, some of the stuff – I can use stuff that's across the board, you know what I'm saying? And it's not all geared towards, like, just because it doesn't cost as much as the Byzantine traditional stuff doesn't mean it doesn't sound good. My Minos B8 alloy symbols are the best there are. Mm -hmm. You know, the, the the B8 alloy stuff, which is typically considered the the more affordable, cheaper stuff, you know, cheaper, um, but it's the more cost efficient stuff is the best of all the companies. It is the best of all the companies. You, no, no other company makes a better sounding affordable symbol than Mino. So, and I love that about him, man. So, yeah. Well, I'm happy to be a part of the team. <laughs> I'm happy you're a part of the team too. <laughs> well, when I got the email and Chris was telling me that you were coming on, man, I, I was like, yeah, yeah. That's, that's what's yeah, man. It's, it's kind of like a similar story that you have. Like, um, it was uh, Sput for you. It was Zach Grooves for me. Oh Zach, yeah. yeah. I just recently met him. I'm um uh the, the at, at the Mino Fest. Yep. Mm -hmm. yep. Yeah, he told me he's a killer. <laughs> he is a killer. He was like, I just spent an hour with Calvin Rogers, bro. <laughs> we hung out, man. We hung out. Yeah, man. Oh man. Yep. Are you doing are you hanging out in any I'm gonna go to PASIC this year. Are oh. you hanging out at any uh festivals or anything? Oh um, I know this is not part of the interview. Oh no, that's, that's fine. <laughs> 
But uh, Zach actually, he had told me after the third mono video drop that I did with them, he told me to like kind of get prepared for that because if they're not gonna ask me this year, most definitely it's gonna be next year. I I gotta, I still haven't gotten a passport. I gotta get a passport. Yeah, yeah, it's, yeah. Are you tripping? I, I am. I am. Oh man. <laughs> You talking about pocketing all these videos and they ain't got no passport boy? I ain't got a passport um, in my pocket. <laughs> I'm uh my my one of my one of my good friends, uh Quentin Robinson, who is a pro mm-hmm. endorser. Um mm-hmm. um he's on he's on uh Hamilton right now, he's a Broadway guy. But he is one of the clinicians at PASIC this year. So I'm gonna go hang with him down there. I'm gonna go support him. The, when I played it, I was the opening clinician at PASIC in 2018. I think that was 2018, 2018 or 2019. When it was 2018, uh, I was the opening clinician, and uh, he came and supported me. He just came to Indianapolis and hung out. So I'm gonna do the same thing for him. Um, Aaron Spears was on PASIC that year, man. I still have a hard time believing that Aaron is not with us anymore, man. Yep. And um, someone, I was looking at Facebook's, t- Facebook today and somebody, uh, Wendell, Wendell Holmes, Wendell. Oh, drummer. Yeah. yeah, yep, yep. He was posting some pictures of Aaron today and uh, I was just looking at the, at the computer like, man, this is crazy. But Aaron played at PASIC that year and man, he Kill and all I was sitting there on the side thinking was I'm so glad I played already. I feel so <laughs> sorry for anybody else that's got to play after this. Bernie Mac right there. Can't, can't, man, can't, you don't can't follow. <laughs> you can't follow. I was, I was, man. Whoever was following, now I was like, I'm, man. That's that's on you. You gonna have to figure that out. <laughs> you're gonna have to. You gonna have to worry about that. I, I played already. I ain't gotta worry about that. I ain't got to worry about that. Yeah, bro. Um, yeah, man. Yeah, I remember. I've never actually met Aaron. I only met him through social media. And uh, he actually let me use um, this Snarky Puppy track that he, uh, he, it's a lot of videos of him playing that on on clinics. And, uh, mm, is it a Snarky Puppy track? No, that's a Ghost Note no, track. Ghost right? Note. Yeah, it's Ghost Note. Bum, um, yep. um, oh, um, man. Um, um, he literally, yeah, that's a spot song. He, yeah, I know that's the thing. He literally sent that to me to test me, and I, that Bro. track killed me. <laughs> he played that at he played at the basic that year. Okay. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Rest in peace to the amazingly incredible, awesome Aaron Spears. Yep. Rest in peace. Yeah, that's my Spears. brother. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so before, uh, before we get into the, cause like we, we hour and 23 minutes. In yeah. <laughs> I always do long interviews. I don't, I don't, know. I, mean, this, this, this is I don't have, I never give short answers. So, <laughs> <laughs> um, so I can skip that one cause we already did that one. So before we get into the, in the, 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 the explain that clip, that will be real quick, but, um, Let's do this one. We close out the interview with this. Let's hear a testimony. All right. Oh I man. One. I I got I got one. I still have not uh released on YouTube. So you you go you can go right ahead. Man, I mean I mean every day is a testimony, man. I can I, mean. I can go back to I can go back to Days I was being dumb in high school, gang banging man, and I, you know, God shielded me from bullets or from, you know, crazy all kind of crazy situations, man. Situations where I was supposed to be one place, I ended up being another, and you know, I think my biggest testimony is um not my biggest testimony, but one I I, I thank God for bringing me through every day was um. During 2012, when I I, I got robbed, um, I was uh, I was coming home from the studio. I was getting ready to um, I was getting ready to go overseas with Fred Hammond. I was getting ready to go to to to, to Africa, and uh, came home. Man, some guys were planning to carjack me. Um, 
and and steal my gear. Um, and so uh, I pulled up to the back of my crib, man. And some guys jumped out and, you know, was trying to get my keys, man. And, well, actually, one guy ran up on me and put a, put a gun in my back. And uh, he was like, don't move. I turned around. And I don't know why. Right. I hit the guy. <laughs> like I should have just like I don't know why I just didn't like I was I should have just like okay whatever but I turned around and I I hit the guy. And I don't, and, and now that I think about it I'm going he couldn't have had a gun cuz I don't know why he didn't shoot me. I don't know. Mm-hmm. But in any case I turned around I was cuz I was getting my stuff out of um it was so crazy. <laughs> I had I had went on this thing where like I'm not eating McDonald's anymore, never again. Like in 2012, I swore off of McDonald's, right? Okay. And then I got out. I I come. I get home. I get out of the studio session super late. It's like 10:30, 11 o'clock at night, and I was starving. Mm-hmm. And I was like, man, I'm gonna have I had to give me some McDonald's. <laughs> and I stopped and got me some McDonald's, man, and uh. The guys, I was pulling up in, in my house at the time I was standing in an area called Bronzeville, which is close to Hyde Park in Chicago in the city. I stayed like five, six minutes away from President Obama at the time, bro. And um, I pulled up and I had we had parking spaces in the back, but I didn't have a gate. And so I just pulled into the back and the guy pulled, the car pulled up when I was pulling in, but they parked on the side of me, not, not on the side of me, but they parked on the side of the street. So I was getting my stuff. I, I got out of the car and I walked around to the other side of the car cause I had like one book bag and I was getting my, my McDonald's out and a uh, guy came on behind me. He was like, don't move. And I put my stuff down. I dropped my stuff in the front seat and I turned around and I hit that dude as hard as I could. And I went to run. I hit him as hard as I could. And I went to run. And then he had, and there was another dude coming like out of the corner. And he came out of the corner. And I was running like, and I'm thinking like, did I see this? Did like, am I seeing something? And I ran right into this dude. So I just run and try to charge him, try to charge him. We both hit the ground and we wrestled. And another dude came up behind me and he had like a bat or something and they, they just went to work, man. And, uh, wow. they went to work. And so, uh, they finally got me down and the guy was trying to find my keys. Uh, he was going through my pockets trying to find my keys. Cause this, after he got, um, after the, the other guy got me down on the ground, I'm laying on the ground and I'm just like, I'm like, okay, 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 okay. And, the guy was going through my pockets. So his buddy, the other guy tried, got jumped in my car. He jumped in the car. And he's trying to start the car. He can't, he can't start the car. So he went through my car. And then these guys was me. It is actually because they, um, my phone was in my back pocket. They didn't get my phone. They didn't get my iPhone. Um, they didn't get my keys. My keys were in my, I put my keys in my back pocket. My phone and my keys were in my back pocket. They couldn't, he, he couldn't like find him. So he went in my car, he went in the house. But by the end, what happened was my wife and my daughter had run outside. They heard the commotion out there. They heard us wrestling around out there. They came out there. And so when they came outside, they were trying to hurry up. So they went to my car. He was trying, they were trying to get the car started. Couldn't get the car started because they, they were thinking maybe the keys are in the car. So he went and started trying to steal the car. So then they went in my car and took all of my gear. Um, so I they grabbed my book bag, which had computers, hard drives, iPad. Um, my, my other phone was in there. Um, and then I, I had a suitcase. So I think I was still, I was maybe hadn't long ago come from out of town and I still, I hadn't taken my suitcase in and I had a snare drum, um, in there. So they got all, they, they got that stuff. Uh, I had a broken arm. Uh, I had a broken arm. My left arm was broken. 
uh, this scar right here used to be a lot bigger, but I had a uh, busted head here, and then I got one kind of the same way. Uh, I'm not just in the back. I had a torn retina, um, but I had my life, bro. Mm -hmm. And so uh, my family wasn't hurt. Uh, man, my church, I was a member of at the time, I was a member of John Hanna's church, uh, New Life Covenant. Shout out to John Hanna and New Life Covenant. Mm -hmm. uh, I served there for about 13 to 14 years. Um, but, uh, Man, they they carried me through, man. They they carried me and my my family through uh, while we looked for a place. So I was like, I, I had never lived in the city before, you know. I'm like, I'm gonna live in the city, you know. I'm go go move somewhere cool in like Bronzeville, and that was supposed to be the hip place to live. So, but I was like, I want to get up out of the city, man. I don't get the suburbs. Uh, so, uh, but they my church carried me through while we went through that, man, and. Uh, Man, I'm grateful that, you know, it could have been a different way. Uh, there were a string of robberies like that in that area. Uh, one girl um, down the street from me had got caught the same way. She was a hairdresser. I mean, they hit her, her, hit her for about $8,000. They actually went in her crib, mm. you know. Um, another guy uh, a couple of blocks over got carjacked, and they shot him. I got to the police station. Uh, I got to the to the hospital. When the police showed up to my house, the guy, uh, I remember the one the police officer says, man, do you know who did this to you? I was like, nah. He said, you got any enemies? I was like, nah, man. He said, you're one lucky dude, man. He said, man, usually in these situations, he said, if they don't get your car, man, them guys get, they get upset, man. They usually, they, they usually shoot you. Mm. And I was like, man, it's, it's nothing but a blessing, man. Um, and, uh, my, uh, I, I remember my doctor was saying it was going to be 10 months before my arm was in shape to play drums again. And I was playing drums in like nine weeks that happened the last week in November, I believe. Um, and I remember sending Teddy Campbell and Aaron. No, I sent a group chat. I sent a group chat video to Teddy, Aaron, Gordon Campbell, and Gerald, who were all at NAM of the day I got my cast off. Okay. And I went to, and I got my cast off. I went to the doctor, got my cast off. I went to a therapy session. They sent me to a therapist. And the therapist told me, he said, man, you play, you start playing drums now. So they told me 10 months when they, the doctor, when I went to the doctor in January, like I said, that was the last week in November that happened, like November 28th, November 29th, something like that. I went to the doctor in the second week in January and they're looking at my x rays and they're like, your arm's completely healed. Bone is put back together. Your arms heal. We're gonna take your cast off. I'm like, what? So my friend uh, Roddy Jones, Lil Rod, had been um, in a motorcycle accident. He's a bass player, and he had torn some ligaments in his hand. And he went to a very uh, prominent uh, therapist, uh, a specialist at the University of Chicago. And he got his hands back together for him. So he sent me to this guy. And uh, I went to him. And I went to my first therapy session. And he gave me one of those stress balls. And he was, hey, man, you know, can you make a fist? And I'm like, yeah. And he was like, does it hurt a little bit? How far down can you squeeze? I can squeeze it all the way down. He says, man, spend as much time as you can with this. Do it as much as you can till it doesn't hurt anymore. And I said, when can I play drums? He said, you, you can go play drums now if you want. I said, say less. I went straight to the studio <laughs> and set my drums up. At the time, I was working out of Philip Feaster's uh, studio. So I went to Philip's studio. I set my drums up. And I went to, I went to practicing. And I sent uh, those guys that I mentioned, Aaron, 
Spears, Gordon Campbell, Gerald Hayward, and Teddy Campbell. I sent them a video of me practicing, uh, just playing on the snare drum. And they all sent me back videos like hollering. They were at NAM. They were actually at NAM. Revival broke out at NAM. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> they were all at NAM. Um, there's a testimony, man. You know, I, I I went through a lot that year. You know, I lost my dad. I lost a son that year. Um, but, uh, man, some kind of way I kept my mind through it. And uh, God, man, kept me. He, he kept me from, you know, from being dead. You know, I could have been dead. It could have been, it could have went another way. And instead of us having a, uh, a service and appreciation service of life, them guys could have been at my funeral. Rex could have been playing a tribute to me at my funeral. Instead he was playing at a tribute service, you know? Mm -hmm. Um, so I thank God for that. That's something I think about every day, you know, you know, people talk about now, you know, um, going home and coming back is something that's just completely undervalued and unappreciated these days, yeah. but you can't take it for granted. Mm -hmm. yep. Yes, sir. So, uh, yeah, oh, uh, I'm getting, getting to mind. Uh, I'm not going to talk about the, uh, me and my brother went through a home invasion in Newark, New Jersey. We, I mean, it's, it's, it's it's, it is, it's what it was and you know mm -hmm. and being in newark new jersey you know the police came and arrested me and my brothers because they said we probably did it for insurance that's a whole it, that's that's just a dumb story <laughs> like at the end of the Whoa. day just dumb just dumb but uh wow e even with that god was funny he was hilarious in it because they tried their good cop bad cop routine but they couldn't tell us apart so he can't. <laughs> <laughs> he don't remember which he can't tell which one he done talked to already. Nope. He 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 separated us, came back. He was like, okay, so your brother told us everything. I'm like, wait, you, wait, you, you told me this already. <laughs> <laughs> he was like, which one are you? I'm like, I'm, I'm John. Oh, oh my god. My. Yeah. So mm -hmm. But um, uh, I, I'll make this one quick. Uh, so. Hey, why did, I, why did I start with this? Okay, so when I was born, um, uh, apparently I was, they couldn't get me to stop crying. So I was pretty much crying so hard that I popped a blood vessel in my in my brain. Oh my God. And uh, during that time, th that time period of that happening, I actually died and they, they were able to revive me. And uh, so like they did that. And then they brought they brought us home. A week later, my dad was driving with all of us to a revival. And uh, according to my dad, died in his arms on the way there. He said I was turning bluish purple. And um, then my dad said uh, pretty much that he just started going straight. Uh, my, my dad's a pastor. And uh, he went straight into praying. But he, he pretty much, the way he described it was he was praying, like, angry at God and just over and over again for about, like, a couple of minutes. And he said he heard a voice say, if you believe what I said in that book, speak it. And, hmm. you know, and he did that. He said, I coughed, like, three times, started crying. He said my first words was Jesus that I've ever said. And um, that was that. He took he he explained that to my mom. My mom said, "Nah, take him to the hospital, have him get checked out." They took me to the hospital. Um, wait, no, okay, let me go back. So when they when the blood vessel popped when I was born, they had surgery. They put in a shunt in my head. So like if you can see, like that's the wrong side. Reverse camera. <laughs> <laughs> so. Like it's pretty much right here. Okay. And that goes from here and stops at my stomach. And that's what they did. Then go back to a week after me dying, dad praying, sending me back to the hospital, different doctor. He asked him, why does he have a shot in his head? He said, they explained what happened. He said, it hasn't worked this entire time. So I don't understand why you have it there. We can't take it out because it looks like it's actually a part of them. That's they went to that. 
Um, I went through as a kid a whole lot of different tests and stuff trying to figure out because they said that there's a chance I could become a waterhead baby and stuff like that where I would just constantly develop fluid in my head through periods of time. Uh, that never happened. Uh, oh, I started no. picking up drums and um, I was doing, I was, I wanted to go to this, this drum camp. Went to the doctor. I did rehab and stuff like that. With all these mental tests, they said that uh, that well, he'll never be able to pick that stuff up. You pretty much like keep him in like special ed classes and all of that stuff. And then, long story short, picked up drums, took the drums, playing shout music instead of my brother now. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, yeah, yeah. So that's yeah, that's that's the light version of what happened. So. Yeah, dude. Praise God for your life, man. Yeah. Praise yep. God for your life, man. Yep, man. YouTube's never heard that, so that that's exclusive. <laughs> <laughs> um. Okay. Yeah. So. Uh. Yeah. We gotta. We gotta explain some of these clips. I only got like. I got like four. I got four clips. Four clips. Um, okay. All right. So what we gonna do right now? I'm gonna pull up some clips, and uh, only one of them is what. You can explain the moment, cause uh, yeah, this first one, I, I'm not gonna lie, I I've said this in a previous reaction video of yours, so like, it's gonna sound weird. I don't know if it's gonna sound weird. I don't know if you uh, like, but like when I was seeing this when I was like, uh, eighteen or nineteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, this type of killing was scary to me. <laughs> scary. Like it was scary to me. That, that's that, that, whole that, clip. I, I don't know how to explain it, but that that's so uh yeah, this is the first clip. This is uh yeah. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> so, What's that uh that's Koji? Yep, yep. Uh let me know if the volume's good though. I don't know. If Hmm. <laughs> yeah. Um... I don't know how many wrist cramps I did trying to do that groove. <laughs> kit was that was that that was just the drum kit there at uh at kojic is that i think that was a was a yamaha kit i think that was a yamaha kit so you need me to pause it <laughs> i mean we can watch as much as you want to watch of it <laughs> okay well this part this part <laughs> do you know that opening almost started a praise break like I don't, I'm I don't know that uh -uh. man so there's a number of quite a quite a few things first of all uh Fred got booked for this I, somebody else was supposed to play that musical that night and uh Fred got called to do the Kojic musical at the last minute and Philip Feaster, who was my keyboard player, and was doing a live recording for his church. Mm -hmm. He's doing a live recording for his church and he couldn't do it. And uh, the band was me, Philip, Lawrence, Jones on guitar, and, mm -hmm. uh, and Snoop. <laughs> and so F Fred is like, uh, I can't tell him no. I told him, yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like, so Calvin, you got to get a, you're going to have to get a keyboard player. 
And so I'm like, all right. So I called my buddy, Cornell Thigpen, who's on keyboard on that clip. Cornell Thigpen's from, from Chicago, man. Lived in Milwaukee for a little while. Um, Cornell passed a few years ago. Not long, actually, his anniversary of passing is um, this week, I believe, this week. Um, but he passed a few years back. We toured together with I uh, with the Isley Brothers. I had him with me for the Isleys for a little while. Um, but Cornell played with Babyface in the Ricky Lawson band. Um, he's a phenomenal. He was he was a phenomenal musician, just incredible. Mm-hmm. But um, I had Cornell playing for Fred before Philip, and then Cornell landed the Stevie Nicks gig, which is the girl from uh, Fleetwood Mac. Um, so Cornell landed to Stevie Nicks gig and then had to leave. And that's when I got Philip from there. So, um, but Philip couldn't do this thing because his church was doing a live session and he was using Lawrence. So I'm like, Fred's like, Hey man, I gotta, I, I, I need a band. <laughs> Try me band. So I called Cornell. I didn't call him. I didn't bother. I'm like, man, we going to three piece it out. It's a midnight musical. So was the first thing. Another thing was that Philip usually usually ran Pro Tools. Okay. Um, on the gig, so Mike Burrell is sitting behind me, running Pro Tools because when we played the opening song, the first song, I sat, I sat the Pro Tools rig on a chair behind me, but the guys were doing so much jumping behind me, <laughs> the computer kept stopping. Oh. <laughs> Okay. Yeah. So so Mike Burrell came and sat behind me. He grabbed my computer, came and sat behind me, and I'm having him trigger the pro the, the sessions. That's why you hear Fred going, wait, wait, wait. So oh. when you hear Fred say, but look at your neighbor and say they that wait. Cause usually when he say they that and I usually then Philip usually goes boom. But I'm telling Mike, I'm like, start. But Mike doesn't know the song. He's looking through the, he's flipping through the, through the marker list, trying to find they that wait. <laughs> Cause we all over the place at this point. So Fred's like, wait, wait, <laughs> wait. <laughs> then he starts it. I mean, um, wow. Yeah. So that was a, that was a fun night. Um, Josh Mayfield is sitting back behind me. And that's Josh. That's Josh Mayfield. That after I play that shot, he just does it like this. Oh yeah, I, uh, Josh. That. Josh is, is is my little brother, man. I it, I was introduced to him as he was a kid by um, my pastor, Bishop Larry Trotter, and so um, uh, Josh is um, you know he sitting back there behind me. He had been killing that night. He's playing with Judith McAllister with the, you mm-hmm. know, with the main band. So, uh, yeah, he had, it, I'm, he had his guest <laughs> drummer moment. That's what that was. <laughs> <laughs> and then I didn't have, and then I, I'm playing with no ears. So, which I usually have ears. So I'm like, I'm looking at Charles Harris who is running everything. And I'm like, yo, turn the loops up. Like I'm playing on a wedge. I ain't played on wedges in years. I'm playing on a wedge and, you know, so I'm looking at him like, yo, turn, turn, turn it up, turn it up. So, um, man, that was, you know, it's one of them things like you just get through it, but it was, it was a fun night. It was a fun night. Uh, you know, Okay. I ate some good. I ate some good St. Louis Chinese food that night. That was, might have been the first night somebody brought me St. Louis rice, like Chinaman rice. Like oh, I ain't know nothing about that. But uh, yeah, that's that was uh, that was that was St. Louis. Yeah. Okay. That okay. clip. Okay. Let's. Oh, I got. I got another one. I got another one. Uh, let me get out of that. Am I still? I'm still on the thing. Let me do that. All righty. Um. So that we, yeah, I'm I'm just gonna. This is uh this is a quick clip. It's just I'm trying to figure something out. Have you did you ever do a clinic in in New Jersey? Mm-hmm. I've done a couple, I believe. Okay. Uh, let me let me let me put this let me put this on the screen. This is the type of stuff that makes me mad. <laughs> I'm not, gonna <laughs> lie. not even gonna lie. Okay. So that's in St. Louis. This is St. Louis. Okay. Woo! That's a 
that's an old clip. When I tell oh you, God. this looks exactly like a church I used to go to and play at in New <laughs> Newark, New Jersey called HPC. I only thought that this was at the same place because Spanky did a clinic in Newark, New Jersey, and it's the same angle, same red carpet, same window, same <laughs> speaker, same flower. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I swear, I'm like, I, I'm 30 minutes away from this church when I was living there, and I ain't getting a notification or nothing. No, no, nobody told me nothing. <laughs> nothing. But uh, yeah, that's that's all I wanted to do uh, talk about. That's a clinic. Uh, I, uh, Kevin Kelly, they had me come like some. I think Kevin Kelly or Jay Ross maybe had me come to St. Louis and do a clinic there. Yeah. Okay. That's a long time ago. Ooh, okay. Uh, okay. This one right here, I need you to explain this clip. I need you to explain it. I need you to explain what happened, what's going on, whose fault it was, and uh, yeah, Let, let's let's get to it. Let's see. I mean, uh, I, well, yeah, where is that? Let's share screen. I'm almost positive I know what, <laughs> what you're this, about this to. This is titled 2015 Straight Pocket. Oh, no, I don't know what this is. Uh, I'm just trying to figure out what happened here and what what. Hold on. <laughs> was that was somebody out of pocket? Like. <laughs> <laughs> Man, you know. Uh, let's see. Okay, so this is Festival of Praise, 2015. This is a man. That's, to this day, probably the best. This is the the best tour I've ever done. This is the most oh. fun I've ever had on a tour, musically. All the art, the, the, the artist lineup is. We had Fred, Donnie McClurkin, Hezekiah Walker, Israel Houghton. Mm-hmm. Then we had Israel, Israel holding the heads switched off on some of the dates. So it was either heads or Israel. Then we had Kim Burrell, Isaac Carey, Zacardi Cortez, and Jessica Reedy. That tour was insane. And that. oh man, that was a long show. Like it was, it was a three hour show. Okay. Oof. It was a three hour show. With an, so, but I mean, we took an intermission. So did an hour and a half, I think an hour and a half took intermission, did another hour and a half. Um, that was a fun tour though, man. And man, I would just be, you know, Donnie, now Donnie McClurkin likes, he likes all that. He's, he's all, he's okay. so, so that's us playing Hail Jesus. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then we in the intro and Donnie, we coming out of, this big intro where we did, I think we did this, we did uh, Let the Praise, but we had all these hits and stuff and all these uh, disarrangement. So we come out of um, Let the Praise with Fred and we, boom, 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 explosion, boom. <laughs> Black screen, then we came in with the, with the, uh, we came in with the um, slide the family stone sample. And hell, geez, with all the hits and everything. And man, I was just, I'm overplaying and going crazy, having the time of my life, bro. You know, <laughs> that's, that's, that's what that is. That's exactly what that is, man. <laughs> like Donnie wanted this. Like, wait a minute. No, no, no. I, I mean, I ain't saying it like, you know, he Donnie, you know, Donnie definitely likes, you know, he he likes excitement. He likes, you know, he 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 likes you to go for it. He definitely mm-hmm. likes you to go for it. Uh and that's all I was I was just I'm like, man, but I I mean, I played a lot I overplayed a lot of 
music on that tour, which was, I mean, nobody really felt like nobody really was like, yo, man, complicated on chill. But I played more than I usually would. You know what I'm saying? I'm, I, maybe it's, I overplayed for, for it to be me. I'm saying that, mm-hmm. you know, but uh, man, it was a three hour show and it was a lot of hits and, you know, it was dramatics and antics and lighting cues and stuff like that, you know. And, and I was the MD, so I did what I wanted. <laughs> <laughs> <Damn, man. laughs> that makes perfect sense. Um, yeah. I, I almost forgot to ask, because um, I probably you probably don't have it now. So it's pretty much like a two part question on one, pretty much if if you ever got nervous playing in arenas like this. And two, like, what would be what would be your mindset on overcoming something like that? Yeah, man. Um, that tour, I got. I man, I, when I first started playing, when I first started playing with with, with John P. Key, when I first started playing with Fred Hammond, man, those were some of the most intimidating days of my life because coming out of out of um, John P. Key coming going to me from coming from Liddell. This is when really this is kind of for me, like this is when people started kind of pledging their allegiance to not just artists, but their musicians. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? This was the beginning. That was the beginning, like the beginning of that thing where people started making themselves familiar with not just the artists, but the musicians that were with them. And um man, I would be getting I remember my first West Coast run with John P. Keys in like Oakland somewhere. And I was excited. I had never been to the West Coast. I had been to the West Coast before, but not like on a run. Like we played like four cities, four or five cities on the West Coast. And the first night we were in Oakland. And I think this is where I met. I think this might be the first time I met Eric Moore. I think it was the first night I met Eric. Um, um, and we play, um, we play, they had, we were at this theater, they had these curtains and, uh, man, they screaming out, Liddell, 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 woo, Liddell. <laughs> and finally, John gets in the microphone and this is before we started the show. So the curtains are closed and they waiting for us to start and. They they hollering Liddell Liddell and finally John gets in the microphone and goes Liddell ain't here Liddell ain't here no more and man just as loud as those people were you heard the entire room go oh like <laughs> like it was crazy bro and I was like oh man these children don't want to hear me. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. And man, they was they were like and man, that was a rough night. Um and then, you know, Marvin McQuitty had a following, bro, and they were devout. <laughs> they were they were like they were like cult followers almost, man. And so I remember even when it came out when people started finding out online that Marvin wasn't with Fred anymore. I was seeing people like talking about like this gig just isn't the same anymore this ain't nobody wants to hear this music with marvin and then there were people like well i just hope the drummer ain't calvin rogers because i'm hearing too much of him right now (laughs) like because you know i was like on a bunch of records then and then somebody was like actually the new drummer is calvin rogers (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, man. Uh, but I, you know, those guys had huge followings, man. And so I would get in some of those rooms. I would get there, and people would be looking for them. And some of them. So when they then when they found out that those guys weren't there, some of them were just there just to see, like, if I was worthy of being on the gig. You know what I'm saying? If I deserve to be on the gig. So they was just waiting to hear me. You know, some of them had their mind made up about me, regardless. You know, and you could tell when the guy meets you. You know what I'm saying? He, you know, it's kind of staying off, you know, what's up, whatever, you know. Mm-hmm. Um, so, but man, I just, uh, you know, I just, I just made it through. I just pushed through, you know, and when, um, when I, when, when I got there, man, you know, when I would be nervous, 
I would just, I would find somewhere to get, you know, to get in my space and I would just calm myself down, man. And it's like, man, you know, hey, you're exactly where you're supposed to be, bro. And breathe in, breathe out, warm up, play for your, play, play from your heart. Don't play for any of them. And that's what I always did, man. My, my old man was always never play for people, never play for people. So in those instances where I was super nervous and I didn't really know what to do, um, I was just like, I was have anxiety. I'll just find somewhere, get in a small room somewhere, take a deep breath, calm down. And like, man, yo, you're supposed to be here. You're exactly where you're supposed to be. And none of them can put you on this gig. None of them can take you off of it. You're here because this is where God has ordained you to be. This is where you're supposed to be. Play from your heart. Like you do every night, get on, get on drums, play, get off, keep it moving. It's in the next city. So, yeah, that's a, yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's better than me just using giant symbols to cover my viewer to cry. <laughs> 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 Which that worked too. <laughs> yep. <laughs> hey man, you know you have like this. <laughs> It's like, no matter how emotional the, the, the story is I give you, <laughs> you, you're going to come back with something crazy. <laughs> like, I'm just saying, I'm like, yeah, man, I just steal away in a small corner, man. And, man, I say, man, God, I'm, I'm, I'm right where I'm supposed to be. Yeah, man, you do that. Or just use gigantic symbols so you can hide. <laughs> 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 My bad. <laughs> oh man, that's pretty good, dog. That's pretty good. That's pretty good, Josh. <laughs> All right. <That's> good. Hey. <laughs> that's what I what I had to do. <laughs> that's what I used. Oh man, that's pretty good. Uh, okay, I had one more clip, but it, like I can, I'm gonna play just maybe 30 seconds of it. I just need to understand like the structure of this and like like who who came up with the idea of this. All right, yeah, this so this solo like I I get lost every time I hear it. You you <laughs> now, now uh there's definitely a lot of clips of this solo even longer yeah and like yeah how did man um just uh so at one point we were playing that song and somebody made mention of uh the teledevil i'm back um reference and fred was watching it and was like i'm gonna give you a solo on the song okay. and so <laughs> i'm like we taking band solos now like who we just like <laughs> why are we doing that uh but uh yeah, man, Fred was it's like, man, we gonna um we gonna, you know, I'm gonna give you a solo here. And then one at one point we used to flip to go go. Like it used to be mm-hmm. like we'd be boom 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 the Chuck Brown thing, chung, 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 boom, jack, 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 jack. I had to wait to catch that whole thing. But one night, uh, man, we would just said we would just be at Fred's warehouse, and we would be. That was the thing about you know the gig, which is, you know, one thing I appreciate about Ty Tribbett is I still see 
him continuing it. You don't see a lot of, it's, it's not a lot of like self-contained bands. Like, you know what self-contained bands are like back in the seventies. That's, that's what they would call like cameo and the gap band and earth, wind and fire. You know what I'm saying? Those are bands where like the, the band was the, was the, was a part of the group. So, um, and now, you know, you got guys doing things like, you know, Hey, I'm going to be on the Midwest coast. I'm going to be in the Midwest, you know, side of town. Let me use these set of guys. And then I'm going to be in, uh, you know, I'm being Southeast, you know, part of the U S let me use these set of guys. And then Mm -hmm. uh, I'm going to be down South. I'm going to be on the East coast. I'm going to be on West coast. Um, but it was just something about, you know, and to see Ty Tribbett, you know, in rehearsal still, you know, and just hammering it out with his band, just, you know, vibing, mm-hmm. catching the vibe. You know what I'm saying? That's something that's, uh, and that's what we used to do with Fred. We just used to, we got together and rehearsed uh, a lot. You know what I'm saying? We got, we would, hey man, bring the guys down. Just let's, it's time to put together a new show. Let's and let's let's spend some time with it, and Fred just be like, man, let's see what we come up with, you know. So at one point, and then we and, and we would change the show up, you know. So sometimes I was so low on, don't let the praise begin, mm-hmm. you know, and you know that's how it happens. Sometimes you know we would sometimes we we take the songs and speed them way up, you know what I'm saying? Play them faster, you know, or uh, take the songs and uh, flip the bass lines on them, you know, like. Uh, w- one time, you know, on like Snoop, Snoop, the song that Snoop wrote with Fred, "Awesome God," mm-hmm. you know, we 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 manipulated the bass line and shifted it to like a, a 16th note ahead. So the original bass line was boom, and then at one point it's like so it's like one two, boom, then some kind of way we flipped it to it was like. Like we just did everything, you know what I'm saying? Fred would be like, he was just like, you know, man, we, you know. So yeah, uh, but all that stuff, you know, Fred would just be like, man, let's try, let's go for it. And that was the cool thing. He was um he was always open to uh, new ideas. He was always open to doing, uh, you know, doing something different, you know, saying, taking, taking the ideas. You know, what happened if we do this? You know, what happened if we do that? So, yeah. Oh, well, yeah. That's yeah, man. I, mean, I ain't got nothing else. I ain't got nothing else. We don't, <laughs> we, don't we, we don't hit Shannon Sharp hours at this point. Man. <laughs> we, we done, we done yeah, man. I, I, yeah, I, 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 you know, Cat Williams type interview. <laughs> so. Right, I probably I'm not even gonna name no names. <laughs> uh. <laughs> I know a few that might actually would do that. <laughs> Throw my name in there for some reason. Bad. <laughs> but, uh, I appreciate you having me on here, man. Yeah, I, you know, I appreciate you great being on here. This, this is, this is not yeah, for the first one ever. This, this is this one, this one going down in the books. <laughs> yeah, this, this, this the one right here um yeah uh appreciate you for being on the podcast the in and out of pocket podcast in and out of pocket yep <laughs> <laughs> you got anything coming up that you want to tell 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 the folks um man you know the stuff i have coming up you guys i'm always putting it on like my pages and things so i'm i'm kind of not touring right now um, just taking a break, man. And, uh, uh, after like 14 years with the Isleys, um, I, I kind of came off of that gig, which was the only one I was kind of touring with. And so, um, you know, focusing on other things, you know, a lot of you saw that I was, you know, being ordained as an elder. So I'm really focused heavy on ministry right now. And, um, but I'm also taking some advantage of not being on the road to do some stuff that I want to do. So like, um, next week I'm going to, I'm doing a clinic at Berkeley and, uh, and I'm taking them. They, so they, they asked me to put a band together and bring a band. So I was like, okay, cool. So I'm taking a band of guys with me and we play some, some original stuff, some covers. And then the week after that here in Chicago, I'm actually playing at a jazz club. I put together like a straight ahead band, right? Yeah. like, like, like straight ahead, old, old school jazz. Like, you know what I'm saying? 
Uh, and so I got Sheree Reeves on upright, guy named L- Lenar Razor, keyboard player. Oh, yeah. Incredible. Oh, Lord. Yeah. Um, Lenard is playing keys. And then um, um, guy named Victor Garcia, who was, who was, who was bad. I had him in the horn section with me when I had a horn section with the Isleys. Okay. He's cold blooded, man. He can, man, he can blow. Uh, and then a guy named Pat Mallinger, who's a saxophone player, but I was a part of a jazz program in high school called Jazz Mentors. It was spearheaded by Ramsey Lewis, which is how I met Ramsey and ended up traveling with him and playing with him. Uh, but he's in the band. So it's the Calvin Rogers Jazz Quintet, and we playing some shows um, here in Chicago. The first one is on the 26th of June. So I'm just, man, taking this time to, you know, kind of do, kind of do some stuff that I want to do, man. So. You know, and I'm going to be playing some more of those dates. Uh, I'm working, I'm slowly working on some music. I'm going to release something. This will be the last year that goes by where I don't release any music. So me and Spud, I'm working on a song that I wrote this song and I'm like, Spud, I want you to produce. I want it to be like Ghost Note on it. So I don't know if you're going to let Ghost Note actually be on the song, but um, me and him working on the song that that I wrote. And now he's taking it and finished writing it. So it's, uh, you know. Uh, it's a it's a cool concept, you know. So, uh, uh, I'm looking forward to putting that out soon. So it'll be out soon. Yeah. Okay. So if you want to see what's going on with me, you know, just go to my Instagram. That's where I post the most at. So. Okay. Yeah. Yep. And I'll be sharing those pocket videos. You know, and that those videos you put out, man. I was like, this is <laughs> right. genius, man. <laughs> man. This is yo, genius. With, uh, it does. It's so crazy. How I could you, it's manipulation is a sin. It got it's crazy. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> I could make any movie talk about pocket, and it's so. Yeah. Weird. <laughs> hey man, with the first one you came out with was the first one. Uh, uh, um, what's the name of that movie? Lean, Lean on, on me. me. That was the first voice. With, oh my god, with Morgan Freeman, <laughs> bro. The first time I seen it, man, I was. Like I, I I got home late from wherever. I don't know where I was coming from, man. It, was, it had to be like two o'clock in the morning. And you tagged me in it. Yeah. So I I like I, I couldn't I got in bed, of course, my adrenaline's flowing. I think I was coming in from playing or doing a session or something. And I'm laying in the bed, man, and um so I'm scrolling through Instagram and I'm like seeing these comments for and so I hadn't looked at it. I'm just like, What are these comments? What are you talking about? I'm like, why somebody Commenting on a video, and you know how you can see the thumbnail. So I'm like, that's Morgan Freeman. Why is somebody commenting on a video with me with Morgan Freeman in it? And it's so many of them. Yeah. So finally, I just clicked on it, man. And it took me like it took me a little no- longer than it should have to realize what was going on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but when I realized what was happening, bro. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> oh man, it, the the one where they leave in the courtroom, <laughs> and the girl she, she come out. He was like, "Why is she looking at me like that?" <laughs> I thought y'all know how to play pocket. <laughs> oh man, oh, that was man. great, man. Those those videos are great. Those videos are great, man. I gotta find it's them old movies because they yeah really man acting so when they that man movie, yeah about pocket <laughs> genius yeah that's... man that's genius bro and man you know just you know man I, I I'm I'm glad that uh. You know, man, I'm I'm glad that you 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 have success, man. You know, you you kind of started your whole thing was about you making videos about other guys killing. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. you know, uh, and it's just something you just don't see these days, man. The, the internet is so weird, you know, bro. Um, but uh, man, I don't I try not to spend a lot of time talking about haters. I hate that. I hate when people spend all their time talking about somebody hating on them or down on their haters. So mm-hmm. I ain't gonna talk about that, man. But I appreciate your I appreciate how, how you you know found a way to shine a spotlight on other drummers while building your platform. 
And uh, I, I hope it's I hope it's been beneficial for you. You know, I see that you know your 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 fan base is growing, and uh, man, that's cool, man. So kudos to you, man. Thank you, thank you. Salute to you, bro. Um, it's been it's 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 been cool to see how you've grown and how you've you know developed your uh, your you know what you're doing, and uh, man. You know, I look forward to more, more seeing more of it, and uh, I look forward to you uh, seeing some more of these minor videos, man. Hopefully, we'll get a chance to hang, man. If you if you think about it, I'm going to be a Pasic this year, man. I'm going to be in Indianapolis this year. You should definitely come. I don't even know who all is playing this year, uh, but it's always a great hang, man. It's always a great hang. Um, and when is it? So, Pasic is is always in November. In okay. Indianapolis, yeah. And Indianapolis is a cool place to hang, man. Uh, I got one of my favorite restaurants there. A couple of spots I like to hang out at, man. You know, so. Okay. And it's, the hangs are always good, man. Why are you laughing, man? <laughs> I mean, we about to, what's the restaurant? We probably can get a sponsor. <laughs> <laughs> man, you know, um, man, um, uh, it's called uh, Izzy, Izzy and Harry's. And it's on. It's Izzy and Harry's, and the, they're owned by a com- another restaurant. The same restaurant. Um, Izzy and Harry's is the like the seafood pasta kind of spot, and then okay. Saint Elmo's is the steakhouse. Okay. They they both got so they kind of have the same menu a little bit, but uh, Saint Elmo's Steakhouse and Izzy and Harry's, well, two of my favorite places to hang out in Indianapolis and. Uh, I got a couple other spots I'm, I'm gonna talk about on online, but we <laughs> not, nothing like that, nothing, nothing crazy, you know. Said nothing crazy, but you know, not, nothing crazy, you know. what I'm saying, but uh, you know, everybody knows me, you know. Knows I don't know if everybody knows, you know. I some people can't, you know. You're supposed to be a man of God, you know. I I, I do enjoy a nice cigar every now and then. So there are a couple of uh, very very cool cigar lounges that I like to hang out at, man. So. I hang out there going go like with uh Steve Harvey. Why you, you <laughs> Steve Harvey? Yeah. Uh, so man, I you know I got a couple of guys that I don't know that like Dennis used to Dennis used to hang out and like, he doesn't smoke anymore, but uh, since he since he went through the illness, so but we used to hang out. But man, the last the year I was there, man, we went me and Aaron Smith, Quentin, Todd Zuckerman, Dennis Chambers. We all we all went to, went to, to, had, had this amazing dinner, man, at at, at uh, Saint Elmo's that private room, and uh, then we went and hung out at Cigar Lounge. And, um, so yeah, man. But uh, he <laughs> said Steve Harvey, <laughs> man. <laughs> yeah, man. You know, it's 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 a great hang, man. And the drum clinics are are cool. Like I need to look up who's going to be on there this year, but yeah, man. Um, It'd be good, man. You probably, you know, a lot of people will probably be 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 happy to see you. You know what I'm saying? Stuff like that, man. I want to go and support uh, my buddy Quentin, and uh, you know, see who else I'm going to hear this year. I don't even know who's playing, but I like to go. It's it's a good it's a good hang. It's like it's kind of like Nam, but just for drums. Okay, you so. have, are you ever aware that your presence alone might make somebody too nervous to even perform? Uh, I'm not, yeah, I'm talking. I'm talking. Maybe, maybe newer drummers that you know. Cause man, I, you, you I just that, I. You got that guest drummer energy. I'm, that's all. I'm, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> the guest, the, the guest drummer is killing me, dog. <laughs> um, no, man. I, you know, man. We all, we all had to play in front of our peers. I mean, that's that's the way you. Uh, I, I mean, I grew up in Chicago, man, and and we used to have jam sessions, and uh, you know. I man, I can't. I, I remember one night I played at a jam session in front of Teddy and Oscar. They called me up to the drums, man, and I I, I promised to God. I I sat down on the drums and I I went to close the hi hat and my leg felt like a spaghetti noodle, bro. Like I couldn't. I was so nervous, man. <laughs> you know, it was. But that was one of those moments where I was like, whew, like, hey. <laughs> do or die like this you gotta you gotta do it man so you know that and all those those moments man are some of the you know some of some of my best playing has been in those moments where i've been nervous you know where i've been uncertain 
Um, you know, just like, yeah, man. So you worried about being nervous, man. Come on. <laughs> hey, man, I, I, look, I, there's times where I was, uh, I mean, okay. So and then I, this is one of my biggest pet, fee, pet peeves. It happened this year at Sweetwater. I, I just don't know a way around it. It's like mm-hmm. when I get on different kits, it's two things. One, the pedal would be extremely too heavy. And most <laughs> of my stuff comes from my foot. And I, and I, I can't even do that. I, I feel completely d- like done. And at the same mm-hmm. time, they're setting the drums up so terribly. Oh, yeah. It, it's, I ain't got time to adjust it. No, I'm just. Oh, man. Yeah, that's that's one thing I don't. Like if I'm not comfortable on a drum kit, I don't I don't sit behind it. You know, yeah. like I don't care, man. I, I mean at Mitel Fest, bro, I I mean, I played a big drum kit and I didn't care how long it took for them to get it set up right. I'm like, hey man, you're like, yo. Because one symbol, one inch too close, you go to hit it and you come back and next thing you know, your stick is flying across the other side of the room. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Or it's nothing like your snare drum never getting the right height and you feel like you you playing over the drum all night. Now you never really got good energy. You know what I'm saying? You done exerted all your energy trying to play in the uncle. Nah. Nah. Yep. Nah. It's my life. So, <laughs> no, man. No, 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 no. <laughs> no. That, I mean, <clears throat> and when you get to the, you know, the big stages, that's, that's hey, man, it's like, I'll play sure, but y'all got a tech for me. Somebody gonna set these. Oh, y'all gonna y'all gonna set to make sure the drums are set up right, or yeah. you know, I can't set the drums up and play them. <laughs> I'm like, yeah. you know, I mean, I can, but you know, you, you bringing me here, you gonna make me do that? Like, so this just went up again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. But yeah. yeah uh... Do the outro again. It was great, great having you, man. Uh, y'all make sure to follow him. His Instagram, his YouTube will be down in the description box below. Make sure to subscribe and follow him, and make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, yeah, to the channel. Yeah, yeah it's a lot of you guys that still watch and don't hit that button. Don't so. don't, <laughs> don't subscribe. Yeah, yeah. But uh, yeah. Thanks for having me, bro. I, I look forward to talking to you soon, man. Seeing you soon.